<laughs> for tomorrow's special day. Hello, welcome to Adventures of Lolly Gag. We are now live. <laughs> they can see us here as including Derek's wonderful little open. Uh, we are going to be playing Best Left Barry tonight, uh, this afternoon, oh, Lord, this evening. Oh, Derek. Oh, boy. Look at this guy. Oh, <laughs> thanks, buddy. I was trying um, to do it before we started. Damn. That's a lot. Look at that. Look at all those... You're such a kind man. He just threw the money out. Uh, he just made it rain. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, we're playing some Best Left Buried this afternoon, this evening, whatever the hell time it is. Uh, Best Left Buried is like a fantasy horror uh, dungeon crawly type of game. Um, we're going to be doing more of a hex crawl-ish type of, type of game tonight. Probably this is going to end up taking more than one session. I think this might end up taking two, so this might be a two-parter, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you've uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for for you know catching this later. Come check us live sometime. Twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers. If you're here live, most likely you just got a random sub from uh, from Derek <laughs> who has kindly uh, thrown out some some subs. Uh, and uh, other things that we do on this channel, we play lots of different games. Mostly we play on Mondays and then Fridays or Saturdays, something like that. Uh, this coming Monday at 9 Central, we're going to be playing Alien, continuing our game. So if you're familiar with the Alien franchise, the film franchise, there's an Alien RPG uh, by Free League. We have an ongoing campaign that we play, lots of fun. And then on and off, we also play games like Mutant Year Zero, Those Dark Places, Electric Bastion, and a few others. Uh, and then throughout the week, you can also catch Melissa and I on a variety of other channels, uh, like Defenders of Cobalt and on Free League Publishing as we play other games as well. Uh, we're going to go through and let everyone go ahead and introduce their characters. We have some holdovers from last time around. Uh, we've replaced Josh with Justin because uh, Josh failed his test, so he's been fired. And um, <laughs> we couldn't find anyone qualified, so we went with Justin instead. So there's that. Uh, but just one by one, just tell us who you're playing. Like, what's your archetype? Uh, what, what did you? What, what is your failed career? And just something good that you can do, like an advancement or something like that. Something like about your character that you think is unique and cool or something. So go by the overlay. Long, you are up, sir. Yes, I'm playing Leon. He's the dastard of the group. He failed at being a storyteller. And my guy is good at not fighting. That's for sure. <laughs> Why do you Nearly, say that? Uh, no brawn. Nearly died last crypt dive. And I'm more of a, I guess, observer. He's better at lying, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so I think everyone kind of almost dies all, all the time. So I think that's a that's a fairly com common thing. So don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, and then let's go over to Ashley. All right. So I'm playing Sophie. Uh, her archetype is a believer. So they believe in some higher higher power. Um, my failed career is uh, I used to be a nun, but it didn't pan out, um, which is funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Um, but uh, I have a consequence, an affliction yeah. that I got um, last time. Um, spoiler alert, it's man eater. Um, I have to eat human flesh or demi human flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. um, if I try to rest without consuming the flesh of a human or demi human, I must make a growing will check. If I fail, I do not regenerate my vigor or grip after the rest. Obviously, cannibals are hunted down and killed by other members of the society, so I have to hide it. Right. Especially think, from my party members. Yeah. I think he took the body of Christ message a little too literally. Just a little too. <laughs> a little bit. It's metaphorical, um, those crackers. Uh, yes, but last uh, last game, I have a bag of flesh right now. Okay. Um, you have back because, of flesh. What? As one has, yes. What? Yeah, because remember when we were in the yeah, water the and we yeah. found the chunks? Yeah. Okay. I was like, oh, I should test these later. And then I was just collecting them in my bag. I'm going to say that enough time has passed that you probably actually have eaten that kind of stuff. I won't make yep. you roll any kind of checks or anything to like to see whether you, we'll just say because some time has passed, you managed to find ways to sneak off from your, your company to eat that stuff. But you're gonna have to figure out other ways. I have to acquire new flesh. Yes. So yeah, you 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 have depleted your bag of flesh. Uh, and this this next this adventure that we're doing this time is a little bit longer than the last one, which was basically just a quick dungeon crawl. This one's gonna again gonna be like a mini hex crawl. Might take a session or two, possibly three. We'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, you might be running into some stuff. So we'll see how this goes. I might be biting my own arms. It's possible everyone in here turns and kills you because you're a cannibal. Could 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 Maybe. happen. 
Could have. Allegedly, like, allegedly. No, it's in her character sheet. It's there. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying it's Horian. Right, right. Um, uh, okay, bottom row, Derek. Uh, speaking of Horian. Yeah, so Horian is a uh, his field career is a tallyman, so it was like a big, you know, badass knight that happened to work in the records department. Kind of got some bad news blamed on me. You know, we lost a war. They say that I miscounted this army, and that's how we lost. They kicked me out, so now I'm an outcast. Don't like people. Don't trust people. Got a big ass great sword that I hit people so hard with. I've bent the handle or the hilt of it a little bit. Um, because I, one of, one of my advancements is weapons master. So I'm, I really know my way around. I studied the art of the blade, you know? Nice. What does weapon master do? Uh, it allows me to take a point or spend a point of grip rather. And then, um, for combat, for the rest of the combat, any attacks I make with my uh, weapon type or the weapon I call out, which mm -hmm. would be my great sword, I have upper hand. So. Nice. Nice. That'd be very helpful. So in this game, upper hand, if you've played Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, everyone knows what advan you know advantage and disadvantage is. So in this game, they have something called upper hand and against the odds. This game is like you, instead of rolling d20s, we roll d6s. Uh, so it's a small pool. If you roll something with upper hand, you get to roll one extra d6 and drop the lowest. If you uh, have against the odds, you roll one extra d6 and you drop the highest. Uh, if you can ever get three different three uh, on like one specific check, whether it's like a like a stat check or a combat check, if you can get three instances of upper hand, it is it is an automatic success. Like it's a trivial thing. You don't even have to roll. It's just automatic success. The only thing if it was an attack, for instance, you would roll damage, but like you don't have to ever roll to attack. So it's always a good idea to figure out like what are some kind of creative ways either through. Working with others, teamwork, uh, being creative with how you're using some of your items or the environment, something like that. If you can figure out ways to keep generating those extra upper hands, like you have the automatic one, but if there's other ways to do it, it could be even better. Having two instances of upper hand doesn't really give you anything, but three would give you some. Uh, okay, let's move it on over to Melissa. Uh, so I am playing Ketrek. She is a dwarf. Um, she Her field career was a messenger, uh, so essentially she... Um, kind of lost that job because she um, she's more on the kind of wits and will side. So, you know, she kind of like to explore between point A and point B and that doesn't really keep you in the messenger business. So the advancement that I took this last time is trap breaker. Um, so I will now have upper hand on stat checks to make, modify or disable traps or secret doors and also observation checks to detect them. So I went with the sort of helpful um yeah. yeah let's keep the keep our folks safe. Does it, your mutant your zero character also mess around with traps uh yes that is true typecast unless it's getting typecast into trap i just i just missed we haven't played mutant your zero in a while so i, I have to get my trap fix yeah, somewhere hopefully logan can play again soon um so i was gonna ask you a question about your dwarf now you're you're a female dwarf named catrack do you have a beard have i asked you this before um i don't I'm trying to remember the lore if uh, dwarves have beards here. I'll say no. I mean, I think it changes from one system to another, so up to you all. Like, do what you want. Uh, okay, no, that's cool. That's cool. I think that's the wrong answer. I think uh, yes was was probably the correct <laughs> answer, but that's fine. <laughs> Uh, and then because Josh one, one shot my boss monster last week, uh, we went ahead and just fired him. He, he was cut. He was not allowed to suit up today. So OP. we wanted to get somebody who wasn't good at games. Uh, so we found Justin. So Justin, tell us about your character. <laughs> Justin. My name is Jimmy O'Hara. Oh, yes. I am a small folk uh, roofer. And especially part about me is I have tiny hands. I have tiny little hands. Okay. Um, there are reasons for it. Like it affects like I can't have certain weapons and stuff like that. But I just want everyone to know that I have tiny hands. Um, so that's very important. Do you know what they say about a man with small hands, Justin? Jimmy O'Hare has a giant set of junk. So you can't say that. <laughs> it's just like the Deadpool scene when it's like baby size. <laughs> <I've>, yeah. <laughs> I bet it feels massive. Yeah, it's like, oh, I, I can't carry this big gun because these tiny little hands. Well, oil be fucked. <laughs> well, oil be fucked. Um, Anyone can do a, an Irish accent. I love that. So, well, oil be uh, fucked. basically, I don't do much. I'd, also, my brawn is a zero. Uh, my will. He's a scrawny little lad. Um, but uh, I have a rallying shout. So, I'm just Mr. Positive all the time. Nice. My job is to sit here and make it so everyone's having a great time. Uh, so, I was fired from my roofing job because I was just. 
giving great advice all the time up there on the roof and wasn't actually doing my job. So that's why I've uh, found myself to be a battler of the, of the evil instead. Okay. So, yeah. Do the children try and steal your lucky charms? These damn <laughs> children keep on taking me cereal out of my house. Oh, it's boy. pissing me off. You know, we have a very large Irish following uh, on the Avengers and Lollygagging, and they are all just tremendously uh, honored right now. Just tremendously. Okay. They, should be, they should be honored by my ability to, to almost chameleon my way into their lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Do you guys have any questions about the system or any, any rules, things that we want to clear up before we get going? Uh, we can tackle them when they come, but if there's something that's outstanding right now, we can do it. Uh, so... Any thoughts? Everyone kind of knows how to right play. Now. All right. Fantasy horror setting. This one's going to be a hex crawl. I'm going to move us over uh, on the on the overlay here to a wee bit of a map. Uh, I've been kind of obsessed with like hex crawls and stuff lately. Um, I don't know why, because uh, I never really run them, and so I kind of want to give one a try. And so we're going to do kind of like a mini hex crawl here. Um, so... We, or you, I should say, uh, your group is, um, you're obviously, you're all members of, of a company of crypt diggers. This is a common thing. You all, because you've been so bad at all your other jobs in life and you've been fired and you fail and all that kind of stuff, all that's really left for you to do in life is just to go into the really dangerous places of the world, try to find stuff that you can salvage, and then try to sell it for coin and for experience and stuff like that. Uh, so this is this is what you do um not saying you're good at it i'm not saying it's not hard or anything like that but this is who you are and what you do um so you all have been it's been you know there's 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 no continuation from our last one this is a completely different adventure uh we're using what's uh the white hair uh doom to speak so if you look uh, if you're if you're a fan of best left buried uh, which is the game we're, we're playing uh, there's a kind of a group of these little one shot type dungeons and things, uh, called doom to speak. And I've just been kind of picking them and we've been playing them and like no real, there's no real like a uh, campaign or anything. We're just kind of jumping here and there to, to different things that look cool. And so we're going to be doing white hair tonight and probably the next time we play. Uh, so you all, it's been a couple of weeks since your last major, uh, spelunking into a cave system. Uh, that had some weird alien creature and floating crystals. And so you've been traveling, uh, you know, northward a bit. Your company has found, again, another place to, to kind of camp out. And uh, you all, as a group, and there's probably a handful of other folks with you, but you you five are kind of like in charge of this small group. There's some other followers. Uh, in case any of you die, we have somebody we can easily fill the party with. Uh, but you have been heading northward a bit uh, away from your company's camp because you've been told uh, by the manager of that camp uh, that there's probably a village up northward somewhere uh, in this valley, a village by the name of Bromwell. And they want you to do some basic resupply to look for potential leads, uh, you know, investigate the area, talk to folks, see if there's anything about like uh, you know, hidden treasures or legends or th stuff like that. Anything that might be a place where your crew could could dabble and find something. And you've also been instructed not to return to the camp unless you've got something worthwhile, like something in hand. Don't come back empty-handed. Come back with something that's going to sell, something that's going to, in some way, benefit the company as a whole. Uh, so you've all been, been traveling northward. Um, likely, I would imagine... Horian is, is towards the front of this. He seems to be the most capable physical fighter. Uh, Cat Track is probably up there as well, capable of looking for traps and dangers and things. But there's yep. quite a few of you. And you've probably camped a few times. And strangely, Sophie would never eats meals with anybody. It's kind of an odd thing. You always hear her just sort of wander off on her own. I don't know. She's a shy eater. I have to pray to the Lord. Okay. And I just, I don't like to bother people. Fair enough. It's fair enough. It's very nice of you. Um, so you've been traveling northward for a bit. You've passed by some travelers, got some confirmations about like where this village is, that like there's a valley to the north, you know, they're there. They're known for being like, you know, avid sheep herders and stuff. There's like a rolling hills and this, this beautiful isolated valley. Um, and so a couple days later, you come across a fairly large pond and you can see that there's a old woman 
that's sitting on a blanket on the other side of this pond. The ponds, by pond, I mean something like that's probably a good, you know, the size of a football field or so. Um, you can see on the other side, she's there. She's sort of barefoot. It looks like uh, classic kind of Tom Sawyer-ish, like, like the her, her pantaloons are cuffed a bit up her shins. And you can see that she's holding a crooked branch with this twine attached, and she seems to be fishing. Um, you look around, and the sky has kind of got this overcast gray look to it. Uh, it's not raining necessarily, but there's a cool wind, a cool breeze. Um, you can see that there's you know, a lot of like, high grass in the area, uh, and you can see some rolling hills and distant trees. There's these large brownish peaks to the east and to the west, but you can see a this valley heading northward, and this pond kind of stands relatively in the way. There's no real road here, but there's a worn down path that looks like this is where maybe peddlers and other travelers have, have passed by. Uh, but as you're as you're curving around the pond, you can just hear it, like she just starts, you know, she she you can see her like jerk the hand motion as she pulls up something from the from the pond. She looks at it. She kind of fumbles with it for a second, and you just hear her curse like ah. God, not again. Fuck this shit. And she just throws it back in. You see a big splash of water in the pond. Um, what are y'all doing? Well, before we get started, it's um, too late. We already started. Is, is I am happy go lucky. And so that means at the beginning of my adventuring day, I get to roll a dice. Okay. And that dice can replace a dice throughout that day. Okay. So roll that dice now. D6. Um, now Bottom right, click the square that, like, there's the different symbols for the dice. Yeah, yeah. Click the square for a D6 and then hit the roll button afterwards. So I have a five that can replace anyone's dice throughout the day. Okay, and anybody's. Happens. Very nice. It says, um, this die may be used to replace a single die at any point in the day, whoever rolls it and whenever it is rolled. Okay. So the die is replaced after it has been rolled, but before the outcome is applied. Sounds so, great. Nice. Excellent. There's a five uh, sitting out there for somebody. Perfect. Okay. So, and then you see, like, as you guys are, are curving around this pond, you see it happens again. And you're going to, you know, you're eventually going to be, like, moving relatively close to her. But you're just kind of pulling around. And eventually, you're about 20 feet away. You see she's pulling something up. And she looks at it. But you're pretty clear at this point from this distance that it is not a fish that she is yanking up out of it. Um, you also look in the pond itself and it's kind of covered in little pads, like lily pads and things. There's these huge reeds. You can hear the sounds of a rivet ribbit like these and like you can see these large frogs like hop and splash and they go into the water as you they look kind of peculiar she looks uh very frustrated um but you can but you're not a hundred percent sure which direction to go you think it's just vaguely north but yeah you can see her that she's just sitting here fishing uh in front of this pond that's quite the catch you going for dinner she looks up at you, and she's got this gnarly, angry look on her face. But you can tell she's not mad at you. She's just mad. And she's like, yeah, I'm going for dinner. And in, in this, I'm so fucking sick and tired. They all just... And she holds up this giant frog, and she shoves it like like forward. And it's much closer to your face at this point. And the frog's... It's bigger than your average frog, but it's it, it, even more peculiar than that. Like, it's got hair growing out of it. Like you can see, like there's this like silvery gray hair Smooch it. growing up out of the back. Like you can see, it's got this nice, robust chest hair that's like all silvery, and like it's like rip it as she squeezes it, and she does. And, like this, the mouth opens up, and you can see protruding from the mouth. There's like a big ball of hair, and just flops down onto the ground, and then she just chucks it back into the water, and then she sits back down, and she throws and casts her line into the pond once more. That sounds like how you get an anime boyfriend. I have no idea the reference, so <laughs> I'm continuing. Uh, a hairy frog. Are those any good? No, they're not any good. You want to eat a hair? If you want to eat it, I'll give you the next one. But I'm not eating it. I'm just so tired of these things. Everything I pull up out of this pond is just filled with, with hair. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I'm just so utterly tired of it. You ever had frog legs? No, yeah, of course. They're delicious, aren't they? Crispy and chewy all at the same time. It's like chicken. They taste better than chicken, if you ask me, but can't get any of that either. And we don't have any chickens to speak of either. 
and now I'm so tired of mutton. Oh, I just can't take it anymore. So I come down here, and I'm fishing away, trying to get me some frogs, and all I get are these tiny little fur balls. Ugh. And you can see, like, there's a there's a tug, and she yanks the, 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 the pole up once more, and another one of these large frogs just covered in silvery gray hair. And she's like, once again, she's just absolutely disgusted, and she breaks into this long cough. <coughs> She's super angry. Is that normal for up here? Is what normal? These creatures. Not uh, not till recently. Uh, I used to come down to the pond all the time. Used to get big frogs the size of big frogs. And they were quite delicious. Um, and, uh, and no one really came down to the pond too often. But uh, but it, this is my special spot. Most folks in, in Bromwell, they... They like their mutton, they like their corn and their wheat and stuff, but I like the the more delicate and, and wondrous frog. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I'm I'm just so tired of hair. Oh, you're from Bromwell. Can you point us in the nearest direction? Where yeah, I'm from Bromwell. It's the only village this side of the this side of the mountains, nowhere nearby. If you, and she points off to the north a bit, and like if you, if you squint really close, you can see a bit of a smoke line coming up. And, you, and as you do, you can see like there's the vague trails of probably like chimney smoke or something like that. Oh, just keep going up there about maybe two hours or so. Nice, nice hustle. You'll get there. Well, thanks. So that's uh, hopefully your catch goes well. We'll be headed in. You won't happen to have any food, would you? for an old woman. Uh, we should have some rations. Yeah, we have rations, I think. You do. I salted fish from the last dive. Yeah. Uh, I found this in the caves. It might be good. And she takes like, oh, oh. you sure you want to give this over? Yeah, you've been lovely. Oh, lovely? Oh. You're not uh, hitting on me, are you? <laughs> you can see a little blush kind of comes over her like crinkly old face, and she's like, "I haven't felt this uh, this excited in oh, a good twenty, thirty years." But uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, why are you going up to Bromwell? It's a it's a proper shithole. It is. For there's something good out here. Something good? I don't know who told you that. There ain't nothing good up here at all. Just, uh, just a shitty run-down town and a... Oh, not much to, to look at. That to be wrong. Yeah, there's not much to do there. There's a, there's a big old temple there, but no one really keeps it. Everyone's kind of in a, a shitty mood lately. and oh, I, don't, I don't know. There's no sights to see and such. And even the... Even the damn poachers are starting to rip through all the, all the sheep and everything. So that industry's going down. It's probably another year or two, and the whole damn village is gonna fold up. But anyway, thank you for the fish. You're a good man. The rest of them can fuck off. They didn't say a fucking <laughs> thing. But you, you're a nice one. I like you. And so, Ketrick wanted to ask her if other animals have become oddly hairy in this area too, or is oh, it just the frogs? No, quite a few things. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it just falls from the sky, and you can see it on the ground there, just rolling like hair around. Hair just falls from the sky. Yeah, like hairballs. I I said yes twice. I don't know what else <laughs> I can say. Yes, it just falls from the sky. It just covers up some of yes the yeses. Make a no. Hmm. Do they? Oh, that's strange. Okay. <laughs> you do come from somewhere far away and exotic. Here, two yeses yeah. mean yes. I fucking said yes the first time. Why didn't you hear me? No, I was wondering if the hair is falling in hair balls or if it's falling in like individual strands of hair. Oh, little little column A, little column B. And it's just full wigs. <laughs> right. um, I'm going to ask if the next time she pulls one of the frogs out if I could have it and I want to like pop it on the head and take it with for further examination by somebody maybe uh why don't you make a wit check to see if you can capture one yourself instead of making this old woman do it do it 
How about that? Or that. Okay. And you are able to quickly grab one of these uh, these large frogs that are hopping all over the place. When you pick it up, you can actually hear it wheeze, like, <laughs> as it's trying to croak, and it just spits out a hairball. Oh, sorry, little one, and I'm going to kill it. You're going to kill it? Okay. So you have a dead, silver-maned frog. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I came down here to get me dinner, and I did. Not the way I thought it would. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, I thank you anyway, and I'm going to head up uh, head Is up she coughing now. up hair? Uh, you can't really tell. It doesn't look like she is. Not like the way the frog did or anything, but she's, she's just okay. wheezing. She's definitely wheezing and coughing. But uh, I'm going to head back home before it gets dark now. You, uh, you all have, have yourselves a pleasant evening. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I don't stay too long in Bromwell. It tends to get its, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's roots into you and you don't really want to leave. So, but, uh, have a good one. She tips this big old, like, fisherman's cap and then she's, she starts heading west and you can see she's going up the, into the large brown hills to the west. Okay. So, um. As she's leaving, hmm? I say, Remember. You possess the qualities needed to be extremely successful. See ya. And she was O'Hara life coach. Uh, I just have a lot of positive <laughs> affirmations I want to give everybody all the time. And she looks oh, back know. and she's just like, now what the fuck are you on about? You st- uh, step. Just saying you're doing great. <clears throat> and then she just spits something on the ground and then just turns around and walks away. Patrick wants to look at what she spit to see if it was like hair or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's like this big honking loogie, and you can see there's these little strands of like gray and white hairs in it. She must have been eating the frogs. Did she seem to have extra hair on her? Not that you could tell. Yeah, you could, you could kill her naked. and then see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's odd. One of us would be interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me this time. Sure. Surprisingly. So. Mm-hmm. Do you... the hairs in the loogie like seem to be sentient or move or anything like that? I think you can like tell. a parasite. Yeah, you take a look at it. And... No. Um, roll an observation test. So that's again, it's a it's wit without any bonuses. So it's actually excuse me, it's two d sixes without any bonuses. My bad. That's a success. Um. Uh-oh. You do notice that as you like, you kind of pick it up, like the hair just sort of, it does kind of move a little bit and you can see it's trying to like push itself through the mucus. Uh, and it, it's like, it's trying to push itself out of that little, you know, sloggy ball and onto your, onto your skin. Yeah. I'll quickly throw that down okay. and use some water to like rinse my hand off. Sure. Um, <clears throat> And I'll just kind of look at the group and say, I'm not much for people, but uh, something's pretty off with this hair. It's uh, moving. Uh, looked like it was trying to grab me, if that makes any sense. That's an unbelievable observation. Very proud of you. <clears throat> Katrick wants to do a quick little um, like biology class frog dissection. Okay. Are those like normally quick? Well, I'm just... It just for the visual, okay. that's kind of what the end result is. It depends on how stressed the teacher is and how many <laughs> how much help they give you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna find like a you know like a tree stump and kind of lay down and okay, kind of go through the cuts and just see. Sure. What um, I see on the inside. That's fine. Uh, yeah, you cut. You on cut the through inside. inside. As you do, um, roll roll an observation as you cut okay. open. <laughs> see, God damn it, Ash. <laughs> Okay, that's another pass. Too good, too good observation check. You cut it open, and again, this is going to take probably about forty-five minutes or so as you're lingering by, around by the pond, and you can see on the inside uh, all the little various frog organs and such seem to have sprouts of hair sticking up out of them. Oh, jeez. Um, given what was just shared, I want to see if there's any movement of any of those hairs yeah you can see there's a little wiggling here and there yeah reaching for god it's, it's fine 
I don't know what accent she's got. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to share that with the group that uh, we may want to try to stick to food we brought with us and water we brought with us for as long as it lasts. And check ourselves regularly for extra hair. I've been on rations the entire Real time up. I dude. want some mutton. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Science experiment over. Science experiment over. Sun's starting to go down. You continue to travel. Uh, and so for you all, uh, I'll show you like. You're going to be the on the maps just to kind of keep track of the hex crawl for you all. You're the the blue flag. I'll dive in. I'll go back and forth between the hex hex crawl map and everyone else, uh, uh, so they can see it. But you all can see it anytime you want. Uh, you move a little bit for, forward, um, and as you do, you notice like the the trail, like the tail of the the mountain comes down a bit, and it's kind of a rockier area, and you can see this this kind of fairly large zigzagging gully kind of opens up um and you can see that there's a rickety old bridge uh doesn't look the sturdiest thing in the world uh, but it kind of goes over over the gully the gulch and you look down and you can see that it's probably about 50 feet down or so um rocky terrain you can't tell you think there might be a stream down there possibly um but not like a raging river um you do hear like this like all of you, as you're as you're kind of approaching this this rickety old bridge, you you feel this stiff kind of cold breeze wash over you, and you can hear the sounds of like a whale, like not like the animal, like a wailing, uh, like like somewhere. Can't quite pinpoint it. Does it sound like a painful whale or like a... Hard to determine that. It's a whale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep moving in to see if we can get a better... Okay. So um, you you move up to the edge of this bridge, uh, kind of looking around for it. Roll an observation check, uh, uh, Leon. So it's two d six. Just roll two d six. You need to hit a nine. Okay. Oh, that eight. You you're not sure. Um, you can't see anything, but you you think it's coming from below. And when you look down, like as you're you're on top of the bridge now, looking down into this this long gully, this gulch, you can see that there's you know, there's a little bit of a fog that seems to cover the bottom a bit. Um, Again, you you think you hear like the vague tinkling of water, so that's why you think there might be a stream down there. You see occasionally the tufts of fog, like the actual the actual clouds of it, begin to like move a little bit more rapidly, as if something might be moving around in it. But you can't pinpoint exactly what you see. But every time the whale comes up, like you, it's almost like it's like the Doppler effect, like it's moving past in this like in this fog. <laughs> Don't suppose uh, werewolfism is transferable via its hair. Oh, well, I certainly hope not. I'm just going to keep my eye out for kind of traps or anything as we move along. <laughs> okay. All right. You spot a trap in my backpack. <laughs> it's a bear trap. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you often find traps on like main thoroughfares? Uh, there's a someone put a bear trap an i-75 what's going on <laughs> yeah uh, they're called potholes <laughs> fair enough that's a fair point okay um okay so what are y'all doing you got this rickety old bridge you've got this whale you got this fog and a gulch you tell mm -hmm. me what you're time of day what's that what's the time of day uh it's like evening time sun setting it's still out though well it's the whaling below i don't know if you want to check it we should make sure that someone isn't in need of assistance. Are we going to see anything in fog? Maybe it's not on the surface. We can go through. Hmm. Then past All right. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to equip my heater shield. <laughs> uh, lower some rope over the bridge then. Okay. Yeah. So you lower some rope. You guys got 50 feet of rope, so it's 
tie it off somewhere on the on one of the the, the pegs of the bridge or so. Um, okay, is anyone climbing down? I guess since I'm the meat of the group, I will climb down first. I have my heater shield equipped, so I can't use my great sword. But since Me it's too, foggy, say. I'm going to have to have all my armor up. I would imagine if you're climbing down, you probably don't have either equipped. I mean, equipped? like when I get down, because sure, I'm sure, not sure. going to be able to see. So it's, once okay. I get down, I'm going to have it up for any surprise attacks. Okay. I'd get down first, but I got these tiny little hands. <laughs> <laughs> the rope looks huge <laughs> in them. Um, you uh, you start climbing down. Hori, and go ahead and roll a wit check as you start climbing down and you can have one sense one upper hand because of the rope so roll uh roll three d6s and drop the lowest and then add your oh ones. yep you got it uh it, it'll do it for you automatically if you just hit the upper hand uh, okay yeah I was, I was like okay okay so uh 10 10 is good um so <clears throat> as you and is somebody is somebody following or is he going by himself yeah i'll follow after Okay. Anyone who's climbing down, roll uh, same thing. Upper hand, wit check, climb down. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> tiny hands. Tiny uh, hands. <laughs> tiny hands falls. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dead. So go ahead me and roll your your new character. Boy, uh, fuck me. Uh, Wait, give yourself uh, that five. Okay. So, um. As O'Hare is is the last one coming down, uh, his tiny hands just can't grip on the rope, and they start to cramp a little bit. And you just let go, uh, and you fall uh, the rest of the way. Uh, so you got about two thirds of the way down, but the final third you fall. Uh, you can go ahead and take three points of damage uh, as you land. Three, so three against your vigor. I like to think he just gets rope burn, so like his his tiny hands are just annihilated. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. So, the rest of you, you see this happen, and you just hear a little, ah, really a really positive fall as he lands. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> and he takes. That's a couple. A point I read a beauty and charm and grace. Uh... <laughs> so. The rest of you, you you get down and you're in this 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 fog. You can definitely hear the stream now, and you can even see it. Fog comes and goes here and there, almost like really thin tissue paper. And that's when all of you see this figure just moving through the fog, just flying through this slightly in, like tiny glow to it, like a like a blue green glow. And as you look, you swear you see like it. it it's a. It looks like a skull just flying past you and it's like bluish green it doesn't look like a human skull like an animal skull you're not entirely sure what animal but you see it flying past everyone go ahead and make a grip check and it's just uh, i'm gonna use shrieking i'll use my true grit ability which um grizzled folk we're used to the worst the world can offer uh first time adventuring i can ignore a monster or environment grip check and i don't lose a point Okay, sure. No problem. Um, all right. Uh, looks like everybody passed with the exception of Cat Track. Is that right? Yeah, I did better last time because we were underground, and mm. so I got upper hand, but oh, I don't shame. think under a bridge is underground. Uh, no, no, I would say no. Is this no. a monster? Uh, it is. That ability that makes me. Uh, the... You still pass, though, with an 11, so you're good. I, I throw a disadvantage if it is. That's if it one. is, um, yeah. roll another d6. All right. Uh, you still pass. You're good. Okay. Even with your three, I would have been a nine. So you would have passed no matter what. Okay. Um, so the only person who failed was Catrack. Uh, every one of you can take, with the exception of Horian and Catrack, can take a, a point of XP as you pass your grip check. So just put one in the X experience box in your character sheets. Um, and cat track, on the other hand, uh, because you failed, you go ahead and lose one point of grip. Okay. Okay. And this, so all of you see just flying past and shrieking. It's like glowing greenish blue skull. It just seems to be just flying around in the fog. Wow. And it pays no attention to us. You're not sure if it sees you. It's almost like flying around like a 
like a mosquito or a bug or something like that that just doesn't really know what's going on yet. You can't tell if it sees you. But you can see it now. All right, I'll turn to Leon and be like, I don't think there's any help in this unless you want to kill it. So I say we climb back up and uh, let it do its uh, thing. <laughs> it could be a magical artifact of some sort that it's attached to. You said a lot of big words, little lady. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Magic equal big money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> are you well, saying, in that case. Are you saying <laughs> hands for no damn reason? We have to deal with this, please. <laughs> oh, hair. Oh, remind really? me what you're good at. You just got rope burned from climbing. I'll tell you what. I, I went southern. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my god, he's a fraud. Kill him. <laughs> uh, what am I good at? Uh, hold on. Uh, wait, I'm trying to find a good one. Though times are difficult, they only are a short phase of life. <laughs> Do you have like, a good page up? Yes, he does. <laughs> so stupid. That doesn't really answer my question, but what You hurt me, young man. So as you all are muttering about what to do you see this thing just like as it hurls past it just suddenly catches sight of you and comes hurtling towards you all and just just stays there floating right in front of you just i'll uh, raise my shield as i face it yeah! and it just somebody just... hit it don't hit me I... what's wrong with you and peek out from behind the sheep yeah what did you do? Why, why, why would you want to hit me? I could. I didn't hit you. That just seems very rude. I'm sorry, my hands are burnt. It's really painful. I'm sorry, I'm just a fucking skull. I guess your problems are bigger than mine. But why are you just a skull? Oh, because I'm dead. You know, uh, did, you, did you die recently? No. Sort of. What time is it? What day? I don't remember. I'm lost, though. I don't remember how I got here. Oh, is that why you're you're yelling? I can't get out of the damn gulch. I'm trying to get back to the grottos. Could you help me? Uh, out? Uh, if I touch you, will you burn me or something? No. Could you? Well, you're just admitting a really strange color, and I'm not familiar with talking skulls. Well, you're dressed in a really strange color, too, you know. Well, uh, you know, uh, I don't have a sense of fashion. Uh, yeah, you uh, you can, you know, ride along in my pack if you'd like. Do you have anything that we need to grab of yours? I'm a skull. Yeah, did your body fall down here? Oh, no. Maybe? No. No. I oh. died a different way. Terrible. Yes, it How is. How did you end up? In the sculpt, then, if this was... Ah, I just got so sick and tired of the puppets, you know. The, they just keep showing up in the grottos and pushing us out, and I just want puppets? them... Puppets? Yeah, they're made of hair and big and lopey, and they move around, and they think they own the fucking place. We've been in there for generations, and now they're pushing us in. I don't know who the fuck they think they are, though. Did you say they're made of hair? Y yes, they they are. No, oh, there seems to be some extra hair in these parts falling from the sky and taking over frogs' bodies. I don't need like your that. whole story. Can you just get me up out of the gulch or not? Well, she's the one who offered the bag, so I'll talk to her. And he turns, and you realize it's like a sheep skull now. It's got like these yeah. little ram's horns and things coming out, and kind of like... <laughs> Fine, I'll take a ride in your pack, but you're letting like, me out when we get to the top. I have like a like a like a robe with like a hood on the back, so I kind of like put him in my hood, so he's just kind of like chilling on my shoulder a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. Okay, all right. So you put them in your bag, you start climbing up. Um, all right, I won't make you climb back up, uh, roll a climb, but you all can get up there, and uh, and you get to the top. All of you are there. I kick O'Hare back down. <gasps> Just kidding. 
No, you said it. <laughs> this is <isn't> why <laughs> the one time he's not positive. As he disappears, you have wonderful form. He disappears below the below the fog. Hang in there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So you you start uh, you start across. So you you get up to the top. You're by the bridge. Do you do you let the the ghost go? The ghost uh, small thingy. He wanted to go to the gulch, right? No, he wanted to. Get but he wanted to go to the grotto. Yeah. Oh, the grotto. Okay. Uh, so, which way is the grotto? Why? Asked... You said you wanted to get you back. You wanted there. to go there. I know the way back. I just couldn't get out of the damn gulch. Oh. The you damn want... fog just kept coming in, and every time I tried to fly up, there was a stiff breeze that kept knocking me over. Gotcha. We just wanted to check out those weird puppet things you were talking about, maybe. Well, you can come back later. I'm, I'm gonna go now, if that's all right with you. Sure. Okay. Our trick was to look and see what the fog is doing. It's just sort of m- m- kind of meandering around a bit. It's like it's just sort of just settled at the bottom of this this big gully, this this little area that the bridge goes over top of. Uh, What's so- your name? Oh. I don't remember that. We don't really use names anymore. We just kind I'm of gonna go, call you Noggin. Noggin. Okay, that's that's fine. You know, I think I knew a Noggin once when I was a lad. Hmm. Was I a lad? I don't remember. Maybe I was a sheep. Could I have been a kid, like a baby goat? <laughs> hmm. So, so Noggin, why why do you think the fog was trying to keep you in the gulch? I don't know if it was or it wasn't. All I know is I fell and I couldn't get out. Hmm. Have you been stuck anywhere before since you've been just ahead? I'm just scouting for different places for us to move to. We're just getting so freaking tired of the damn freaking whatever the hell they are. Just moving in, taking over. They got their own little village thing going on there, and I just, we don't want any of it anymore. So there's okay. more of you. There's more of me, yeah. Like, more of you just heads? Sure. Hmm. Are all of you at the grotto? Would, would you all, well, yeah. We were. Some of us are looking for other places. I thought maybe there'd be a cave down here or two. Nothing, though. Hmm. How far away is the cave that we were at, like, last time? Like, far away? No, we're close. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're I was going to say, away. we know where there's a cave. Yeah. Well, if we find one, uh, perhaps we could let you know. That's Lavinia. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Some random other person in your party that doesn't have a name yet. Uh-oh. Can Bye. you guys tell I'm Bye. running Backup character. Oh. I yeah, I'm just gonna be Lavinia again. That'll be fine. Fair enough. Okay. I don't know how to do spells. So can I go now? Yeah, take it easy, Noggin. Nice meeting you. Okay. You guys Remember, hang loose. You determine your own happiness. I don't like this one. His hands are too small and his mouth is too big. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> he just speeds off across like starts flying across the bridge and you can imagine if he had hands it'd be like flipping him the bird <laughs> <laughs> he turns around you can see the the sheep skulls doing something weird but you know in your head it's flicking him <laughs> off and it's just going okay so uh so yeah you got this riggedy bridge everyone okay with this traveling across yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just gonna kind of walk backwards, just keeping an eye on the fog, just making sure nothing. Won't okay, it's below. It's like it's like it's like 30, 40 feet below you. It's all just settled. It's all just settled in the gulch a bit. It smells. I still feel like, smells like wood. Like beef. I smell like beef. It smells like mutton. Lots of mutton. Uh... It's a sheep valley. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All comes together. Are you sure you want to cross it? You can always turn back. Who's talking? To I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is talking. <laughs> the bridge is talking to us. So I don't know. I don't know. We're all just like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little sign. There's a little sign for the bridge. It says "Ye Old Rickety Bridge." 
<laughs> established you can always, 1922. You can always <laughs> turn back. <laughs> you can always turn back. Little did you know, it's just the grumpy old troll who lives oh, under God. the bridge. It has, yeah. it has like a little asterisk in Scottish accent. <laughs> oh, this is Please read. this is Scottish. I don't know. The difference. Sorry. Okay. Uh, unite, the, uh, unite the cats. Yeah. If the village is on the other side of the bridge, I guess, yeah, we're crossing it. Okay, no problem. Can, does Catrack have to roll at disadvantage because she's walking backwards? No, she just trips and falls. Oh, hang in there. Okay. Uh, you I'm just, like, holding her hand as we're going along. <laughs> I imagine the bridge doesn't last that long, and then she can oh, return God. to for her forward-facing uh, As you As you walk it's across the bridge, miles. it collapses behind you, and you're trapped here. For, no, everything's fine. You cross the fucking bridge. Um, okay, so it's about an hour uh, after you get across the bridge that you, that you finally make the edge of this village. And the woman by the pond, uh, whose name you didn't ask, um, she was was not wrong. This is a fairly run down looking looking place. There's a handful of like street torches that are that seem to be up, but they're they're basically like tiki torches. Um, there's I don't know maybe a dozen buildings. Uh, there's no semblance of like a wall or anything. Um, take it easy, friend and man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, the uh, yeah, like you can just see like there's there's a handful of people that are moving here and there. Some people are in like uh, are in the alleyways. Like, <coughs> um, you can see that there's what looks like a tavern or a village or something, or excuse me, a tavern or an inn or something like that. It's just sort of hanging there, <clears throat> flapping in the in the breeze. Um, there's like a, who is the alcoholic in our group? Was one of the characters oh, like have a flask or something? That was me last game. Okay. Oh, are you the same characters last game? No, no, I'm in like a different game. Oh, okay. That's what I'm mixing up. I was about to grab somebody's shoulder and be like, don't drink anything here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you see like this little sign flapping uh, in the breeze, in the, in, the, in the breeze. And you can see like there's like a goat um, that's just kind of sitting there. It's got like a, like on, on like painted, faded, and it's got like a mug of beer. And it's just sort of swaying as this cool breeze swaths through uh lots of lots of potholes and puddles and things like that along the way um yeah you guys and you can see that there's up on a hill there's it looks like a church of some kind there's a rickety <laughs> steeple uh and uh it looks like there's like a bell that's kind of going off but it seems like it hasn't been tuned in quite some time so it goes it's sort of a little off tune uh you just kind of get the general sense of, of dilapidation. That lady wasn't lying. This place is a shithole. <laughs> well, we were sent out here for something, so better find it. And we'll head to the lodge. Maybe set up something. Okay. Uh, so you head over to this uh, this little tavern. You uh, you step up onto like the little porch and you can feel the weight of your feet, like as the the sort of the wood planks sag a bit. Um, you see like a couple scat you know cats and stuff scurry around as they're dragging mice underneath. Um, you open the door and like this sort of rank smell starts wafting towards you. It's kind of it's like cooked meat, uh, but it's not like I don't know. It's not appetizing for whatever reason. There's a handful of folks in here. A couple, a couple long, long kind of picnic family table styles. There's a bar off to the sides. There's a staircase going up. Um, a couple people, not all of them, but you know, three or four of them, kind of look up as the door opens and sees you all come in. No one really makes much of a much care about uh, looking at you, and they kind of just go back to whatever they were doing, eating, drinking. A couple of them have plates, but looks like mutton. This sort of gray-brown meat and some what look like vegetables of some kind, like roasted stuff. Smells, yeah, it just doesn't smell particularly appetizing in here. I'll say, Is it really mutton? Only one way to find out. It looks like mutton to me. I'll pull up a stool. 
Okay. Sorry, Justin, find go us. ahead. <clears throat> okay. Well, this place looks fantastic. So and before we before we talk to anyone, remember, you belong, and your love for exactly who you are. Okay. <laughs> Orion's gonna stand on the outside of the door since he's a, not a people person, and he's just gonna kind of do the cross arm things and just lean against the like next to the door. Okay. Um, so, Leanne, as you pull up a stool, this uh, heavy set woman with kind of like a sagging face, a bit, you know, um, like someone who you know has has some weight on the bones, but probably has like just doesn't. It looks like she's been maybe losing some recently. Um. But she, she, she looks at you, and she's just like, uh, Oh. Oh, traveler, are you? Aye. Uh, well, what brings you to the, the Bromwell? It's a bit out of the way. Yeah, we've heard there's something interesting out here. We're looking for it. Oh, there's nothing interesting here. Nothing at all. But uh, if you want, I can get you a plate. Something to oh, drink. Of course, yes. And so, oh, for all of you. Look at everyone else. Yeah, Sophie pops down next to him on a stool. Okay, overly reverent music just kicked in. For like, yeah. I know, it's <laughs> freaking me out. It's, it's not what I intended to have here. I'm going to go ahead and switch that off. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Sophie <laughs> chanting <laughs> in her chair. Just... Over and bow and pray. <laughs> As I... <laughs> this is the greatest mutton. I have ever That's had why I life. leave because I chant just scary shit before <laughs> okay. I eat my food. Patrick would like a bowl of just veggies. Oh. Orion's just gonna eat some of the salted fish rations that he has. He is, uh, and he's just gonna kind of grunt whenever she asks any. She looks at you. Bring like, in your own food into the. Lodge. If you can bring your own food, then you can get out of my place, then, sir. Off with you. That's rude. That's the rudest <clears> thing I've ever seen. What's wrong with you? Were you raised in a place where that kind of thing was commonplace? Or... <laughs> no, um, but yeah, Ooh, she gives boy. you a dirty look. Yeah, yeah. And um, but everyone else gets you get whatever you order. You drop a couple of the coins that you have left over uh, from your last uh, your last crypt dive. And uh, she's like, "Is there anything else I can get you?" Um, I'm sitting there with like an impossible amount of, of food because I'm a halfling and that's what I love. Okay. Is a amount of food. I'm just sitting there like this the whole time, just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you start eating through it. Just no, oh, fine. Yeah, just fine. Ketrick wants to listen out for other folks that kind of have a cough similar to the woman that we passed by the pond. Uh, yeah. You know, a couple people here and there. Hmm. Um, and so Kedrick will try to strike up a conversation with someone at a nearby table. Okay. And just say, you know, yeah, on the way up, we were, came across all of these, um, silver haired frogs. How weird is that? So some like old man, it's kind of like his eye. Oh, how weird is what? I didn't hear you speak up a bit. Silver-haired frogs. Oh, you called me a silver-haired fox? Oh, <laughs> you hear what she said? Oh, she called the... Oh, and after you repeat it like three or four times, like, oh, yeah, there's some hair here. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, it's happening. I wish I could get a little bit more up here, you know? And he's got, like, no hair on his head. Sure. Has that happened before? Has it had what? Well, no, but, uh, you know, strange things, sure, have been happening lately. Uh, you know, a little of this and a little of that. It, uh, you know, it's the most exciting time I've ever had here. Um, I've been here for 41 years. That's how old I am. I'm decrepit. Been, you've been here for a, a, a little a while. Very long okay. time. Clearly on death's doorstep. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we we yeah. heard something about um, puppets in the grotto, and there were some things puppets going on. in the grotto. I don't. 
puppet? Hair, like hair finger puppets. puppets? Hair puppets. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. No, no. Poachers? Do you say poachers? We've got poachers. We've got too uh, many of them. Are, are the, po the poachers from out of town? Oh, you know, we don't. Not everyone lives in the town. You know, people live up in the hills here and there, and some come down from the north. And Is that where the poachers live, up in the hills? I don't know where they live. Huh. They don't come by this lodge. Oh, they better not show their face around here. If they do, well, there'll be a bit of the one in the two for them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I guess they know to keep their distance, then. Be better. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other? <laughs> What's your name, good sir? What's my name? Oh, I'm old Torrance is my name. Torrance. Hmm. What brings you up to these parts? <laughs> You're giving him, like, the Yoda. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Bring you to the parts when I what the hell did I just do? <laughs> I just did like Ringo all of a sudden. Bring you to the yeah. Sorry, I'm sleep deprived. It's okay. We're, I'm old. Right now we're looking for what's going on with all of this <laughs> hair falling from the sky and Oh, that's just old Salasilis. That's, I'm sorry, say that again? Oh, you've not seen the big uh, dragon flying overhead. Uh, no, we must what? have missed the dragon. Oh, well, you know, she doesn't come around all the time. Does she spit Well, I don't even know if it's hair? she, really, but... Uh, oh, you know, just kind of falls down onto the, the ground a bit here and there, like like beautiful soft snow. Right, but I, I took apart one of those frogs and it like gets inside and attaches to the organs, so it's problematic. That's a weird thing to drop in the conversation. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm so glad you told me this. <laughs> well, let saying. me go ahead and take care of it. You all can leave, because I'm on the case now. <laughs> Don't worry at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's Irish not just like yoda. pretty snow that you make you know little snow angels out of it's a little dangerous i've just met you but i cut open frogs and I look at their <laughs> you know this conversation was fun when it started when you called me a silver fox but I got to say, now you're talking about cutting open animals and playing around with their insides. You know I'm eating right now. <laughs> Sometimes it's just great to watch their soul in your body, you know? You are a peculiar group. You're going to be here long? <laughs> no, probably not. Good. You ever shot a frog just to watch the steam leave its body? <laughs> You know, my uncle was a frog. You might have killed oh. him. <laughs> All right, what, what do you say to him? <laughs> but this random old man that you're talking to and just told him about cutting open a frog while he's eating dinner looks at you strangely. People are so head. precious and careful. So there's a dragon overhead that sheds silver hair that sounds crazy oh doesn't bother anyone though keeps to themselves and don't think it's ever hurt anyone or anything it's just an animal I mean so is the frog you killed who's the real monster here Mm -hmm. You've killed more creatures today than that there dragons killed us humans wandering around here. Sure, what what did you say the dragon's name was again? Oh, I really would prefer not to say its name again. It's really long and complicated. <laughs> it started with an S, so I remember. Let's just call it Salicilis. 
<laughs> humans are the real monsters. That's what I learned from Walking Dead. Okay, so anyone else doing anything? So Horian, while, you know, just kind of standing by the door and keeping to himself because he's a grump, um, I guess we'll just kind of, like, just be observing the place and seeing if anyone else is, like, talking about anything that would be of interest to us. Like, oh, I saw this weird glow, from, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um... So you're just like looking for like listening for rumors and things. Um, yeah, essentially, because he's not going to go up and talk to anybody since he's an outcast. Okay. Um, just uh, why don't you just roll like a roll an observation check just to listen to see if you can kind of eavesdrop without getting too close to anything. Ooh, that's a no. Yeah. Um, you hear something about Ram's Head Hill, but couldn't quite make out specifically what was said. Uh, then there's a couple people who, when they catch you kind of looking their way, they kind of give you a dirty look, and then they lean forward and whisper a little bit more quietly. Um, Are we going to stay here tonight, or are we going to keep, keep going? Uh, does the place even have enough beds for five people? No, but we've got stables. You're welcome to sleep in the hay. I think we all have bedrolls. Well, that's true. We do. Forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Food's not good enough for them. Stables aren't good enough for them. Oh, got that. No, I was just saying when we're in the stable, we would have bedrolls to mm -hmm. use. Okay. Yeah. Horian will be down to sleep in the stable. That way he doesn't have to be near anyone. <laughs> Just the rest of us. Katrick wants to keep an eye out for the members of her party that ate the mutton and okay. listening for any coughing. Okay. You hear some coughing from some folks, but nothing otherwise. Time for rest. So, yes. Yeah, are we going to the stables and just sleeping the night? Sounds like that's what we're up to. Is it actually mutton? That's a concern of mine. Okay. I mean, it tastes like mutton <laughs> for anybody. You who ask eats after it. you eat it. It's oh, tough. No. It's it's I'm very cool tough. To eat it. I'm hoping it's not mutton. <laughs> uh, mutton, soylent mutton is people. Uh, you uh, you go ahead and you, you know you bite into it. It's it's rough and tough, but like it tastes like it. It's not cooked particularly well. You don't. It's not spiced. It's just sort of. Got a bland, like if someone was really, really hungry, this would probably taste okay. Uh, but otherwise, nah, it's just kind of. You said it was gray, so I was hoping it was people. I think the the cook did a tremendous job. I mean, just tremendous. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, so it's again early evening. Sun's gone down. It seems to be a really slow town. Uh, there's there's not a whole lot of note here. Like you got this this the stables you you know there's a couple people or excuse me this uh, this tavern a couple people inside a couple other buildings around but like it's a pretty like it doesn't look like there's a ton going on like um what do y'all want to do should we maybe walk off dinner and just see what there is to see people skulking around or whatnot before we turn in I feel like we're um, the people skulking around yeah, I'm down to look around, but Let's don't expect do me to talk to anyone. I never do. <laughs> I'll hit him, but I ain't going to talk to him. <laughs> well, I think exercise always gives you great positivity in moving forward, so... I'm going to hit this one here in a minute. Please do. <laughs> you have upper hand. Oi, your opinion matters. It's okay. Uh, walk, walk, it's walk. trivial. Automatically succeeds. Okay. So you start walking around town. Um, so um, there's straggler people here and there that you can see are wandering home. You can see some people are kind of tossing up their food or their drink in the alleys. A couple people are wandering inside. Lights start going off. You hear the sounds of like the off-key bells ringing here and there. Um, you see a group of people that are on top of, like, outside the, the temple, 
that little church area, kind of looking downwards, uh, like because it's kind of up up this hill there, just sort of looking off into the distance. Uh, a couple of them are holding like lanterns and torches and stuff, but they just kind of they're just staring like over like this ridge that the that the church has been built on. Um, Sister, why is it that you or Covenant always like to build your buildings above everyone else? The higher the building, the closer to God. And she'll like flip her hair back, kinda, and then just keep walking. Hmm. So we're gonna be passing by the church? You get to just direct where you want to go. You can, if you want to go to the church, we can go to the church. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did it? Uh, I, I have no preference. It's up to you guys. It sounded like a small enough area that we can probably walk, you know, pretty much by everything before we turn in. Didn't the lady by the lake or the pond say something about the church? I actually don't remember. She said that a church exists in town. Oh, does it exist? Oh, like that's like the one fixture. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got a pop in church. Some cool. <clears throat> Our Sunday service, we like to throw down a little bit. Uh, Horian will kind of, upon hearing the closer to God thing, will stop and think and say, like, well, if uh, we could always ask these uh, people of the cloth if what's what the most common cause of death is, if this hair is. Uh, alive or if it does something surely the church would know if they're the barriers of the dead right the most common cause of death is sin <laughs> uh <laughs> all right trick will roll her eyes at that. <laughs> remember yeah. i'm a failed nun <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. but and, and this is like hori and completely but be like yeah you know one time i was out in the woods and i saw a man eat another man you're right sin's a real thing just kind of walks up toward the church not thinking about what he said <laughs> we all have the nicest personalities towards one another ashley's just like jesus christ is the answer and you're just like a big dumb idiot that's like yeah fuck you anyways <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite character to play because i never play them enough <laughs> i play it every day in my life it's pretty crazy so we're going to so, start up a conversation with the... Uh... Uh, Horian's not. He's just going to kind of look, see if like the headstones say anything about the dead people. Okay. Like, if there's a message inscribed. Uh, I mean, there's no headstones. You go up, and so if, if you wander over towards where the church grounds are, you can see there's a handful of people that are off to the side looking down, like off over a ridge. Then there's the actual temple itself where you can go inside. Also looks pretty... You know, pretty run down, dilapidated. You also see like there's like a gallows that's set up uh, to like the right side as you as you come up. So left side, group of people looking over a ridge into the darkness. Uh, center is the temple. Right is a gallows. I'll head to the left. You know, okay. see what's, going on there. what's happening, friends? What you looking at? So, uh, so you you see a couple of people like kind of turn and look like, oh, uh. Yeah, uh, hey, little fella. Um, well, we're just uh, wondering uh, if they're coming out tonight again. What's coming out? Uh, I don't know. There's uh, something, something, something kind of weird going down by the, uh, by the graveyard down there. You know. Uh, then what? Uh, what have you seen? I don't know. Something moving around. You know. So we're just keeping an eye out. You know, shadows and and such. That kind of thing. Have you heard anything? Have I, have I heard anything? I think this is some oblivion dialogue. <laughs> uh, I heard, uh, I heard that there might be shadows and such moving down here. I just, I just, I just fucking told you. That's a great story. Uh, Ketrick also went down with him. It's again, it's, it's not, it's not no, you're on a, you're on a, you're on like a little cliff line thing, like looking down. Like they're looking down. Yeah, like I just went to the left where okay. he is. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a... We went down uh, down there in the morning, and he saw just like these uh, these big old these big old carpets and such of hair just kind of covering the graves. Starting to unsettle a few folk, because uh, 
you know, it's weird visiting the graveyard to, you know, speak to those who've been passed and you can't quite see the, the headstones and such, you know. And, uh, because they're covered and such. I thought it was snow first, but it ain't. What, what did everyone do? Did they try to well, to well, sweep it away? Yeah, that's what we did. And the next day it was more. Or maybe it was a day later. I don't know. Could have been two, three days. So, uh, so then a few folks, well, they, uh, they were wondering if something was going down at night. And, well, Kane came up here, looked down. And you could see some stuff moving around down time. But, uh, you know, we don't want to go down there. Who goes down in the damn graveyard in the middle of the night when something dangerous might be going on? That's just stupid. So, I guess we're just going to clean just, it up in the morning. You're just going to let it come for you, then? Well, let what come for me? Your shadows, I don't know. You're, you won't look at it. You won't go look for it, so you're just going to let it come look for you? I mean... I don't want to go down there. You know. Would my bullseye lantern be able to shine enough light from where we're at, whatever they're looking at? So you can see that they set up some like, they like they actually lit some torches and stuff down the way. Like so, like down this like swale and at the very base of this ridge, there's like a couple torches and stuff that have been set up. So it gives some light here and there. It's not the greatest light in the world, but you can see that there's some down there. Right now, you don't really see any activity as you're looking down. But yeah, I, I, it's. It's a good couple hundred yards down in a way. So and there's like some trees and stuff here and there. Uh Sophie's gonna nudge Catrack and just be like, We should we should we should go look. I agree, we should get everyone together and we should probably be the ones to go take a look. Alright, I'll go and I'm going. I take my shield out and start walking down the path. We it's should fun. dissect one. Yeah. See if it's what? like the frogs. Uh, does uh, oh, Orion's gonna look at Sophie and be like, "What?" I'm a, I, I'm a woman of the cloth. I can dissect spirits. I don't think there's. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that, and I will walk away. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. So you guys head down to the graveyard. Yes. Yeah, Catrick's yeah. gonna um, gonna grab O'Hare and just say it's you're, you're looking in the wrong place buddy come on uh, so if with Horian leading the pack he's gonna have the heater shield like you know on his left arm and then I'll use the bullseye lantern in my right hand to like give myself direct beam of light for what I'm looking at okay um, so yeah you, you move your way down you can see that there's this like small gate that's fallen here and there like this almost like a picket fence gate and it's a little latch. You try to move it, and like the hinges are all sort of rusted and busted. So when you when you slide it open, you almost like yank the gate off. But uh, yeah, you look inside, and you can see uh, it's just like this vast, flat, like or actually rolling area with just tons of snow. It looks like snow. It's just this white, fluffy substance that's as far as you can see in this area. Um, periodically, you see these little bumps, which you think of gravestones, kicking up in between it. Uh, and a lot of them are kind of partially covered in this hair, these tufts of hair. Do I see any movement as I kind of pan the light across the <laughs> site? Uh, go ahead and uh, roll an observation check. Isn't um, this gorgeous? A couple shadows here and there kind of, kind of cast strangely as the as the lantern light as you kind of sh you know, move it, pan it side to side. Uh, I'm not so sure I want to touch hair that can move on its own, but, uh, uh, Rakshi, real quick, do I, with, am I able to see, like, any kind of, um, like, dry brush or, like, plant life in the graveyard, or was it mostly just, like, mud, dirt, and headstones? Uh, I mean, you can, you can see that surrounding the fence area, there's plenty of bushes and trees and stuff, some of which have, like, their own little tufts of this silvery white hair on them. But you don't see any bushes or anything like that in like the grave area, graveyard area. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to get my hands on this hair that can move on its own, but uh, I don't know if burning it down would be such a good idea, lest it spread and 
somehow I burned down a village, which might be an improvement. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And Catrick's just generally going to say that, you know, we, you know, if this is coming from uh, Salus Salus, we don't have any information that it's dangerous. So I just wonder why it's hanging out in this area for so long. They're kind of saying, like, I don't necessarily want to go in firing immediately, you know, because it hasn't, like, attacked anyone directly. But keep so. An eye out. Is it over corpse mounds? Yeah, you can't see the ground. But are, is it like... Can we tell where the corpse mounds would be? Uh, I mean... Sure. Yeah. Definitely. You can tell, like, there's little bumps. These little baby mm-hmm. bumps and such. So- well, that's not the right phrase. Uh, and they're like little <laughs> headstones and things. <laughs> Um, That's where they come from. <laughs> this is where babies come from. <laughs> from a graveyard covered in hair from a <laughs> dragon that flies in the sky. Have a good night, sweetie. I, w- I want to see if it's in the bodies. Okay. What would you like to do? Um... Is there anything else anyone wants to do while I look at what I have in my equipment? Orion's just going to keep like looking around with his bullseye lantern to see if he sees whatever shadows the old village folk were talking about, but right now he's feeling like they're just a bunch of loons. I'm just going to enjoy the scenery because today's a great day. Cool. That's really fun. Um, Can I... I have a flask of acid. Okay. Um, so I don't necessarily want to use all of it, but I just kind of want to put like a drop of it on some of the hair and just see if it reacts the way that I'm kind of expecting it would. Yeah, it dissolves it. It's just like, it's not an unexpected way of it dissolving. Okay. Uh, do I, actually, I already made my uh, observation check. Never mind. I didn't see any like footprints or anything. I imagine it's covered by the hair. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a trail that comes down from the village uh, and the, the temple and the ridge, and there's a couple scuffs of, of footprints, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary or anything. It's not uncommon for us people to come here, and he did mention coming down here during the day. Um, right. But yeah, you don't see anything. I mean, like, right now, you guys are just kind of staring into this sort of fenced-in fenced in graveyard covered in air. Is there, like, any... No- like noticeable way, like way the hair was coming from, like it grew from a place and got here, or just kind of just plopped on here. Is there any way to kind of discern that? Uh, roll an observation test. Differences in thickness. And if you're staying outside of the graveyard, I would say this is going to be against the odds. So roll three d sixes. We could go in. You're gonna, uh, I think I a, will. Yeah, I will use my small stature to kind of like squeeze through the gate myself. Okay. A little bit better look as the things are going around. Okay. So you want to you want to go inside. Yeah. Okay. So you go into the graveyard and you start wading through the hair and trying to assess where it's coming from. So go ahead and roll observation check, and I'll say you can roll it at upper hand. So roll three d sixes and drop the lowest. So bottom right, just there you go. Uh, and so you would drop the four. That's a pass. Uh, you can tell that the 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 biggest chunks, like the biggest piles, uh, definitely seem to be where like that. You now that you're inside the graveyard, you can actually see like the headstones peeking up in between the different strands of hair. The biggest piles seem to be like right where the graves would be. And as you're like walking over and kind of peeking, you can see that one of them begins to move, like just starts to kind of grow up, and as as it starts to rise a bit, these arms begin to unfold from the hair. The head kind of folds up a bit. And you can see this kind of gangly, lopy looking figure begins to grow out of nothing but hair and just has a strange posture to it. And you can look as you're inside O'Hare that a couple more of these heavy mounds begin to sort of do the same thing. Um, yeah, they're a grower. 
and one of them's like you can see one of them just like this tiny kind of slender head is just mm -hmm. it's kind of shaking a bit uh because like <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get my sword out i guess just for ready for defense yeah. and i'm gonna just start making my way yeah i'm gonna say you can go ahead and roll a grip check for me since you're inside everybody else is on the outside <laughs> So you go ahead and roll a grip check. Just a uh, regular grip? Uh, yeah, regular's fine. <laughs> That's okay. a grip. Um, okay, go ahead and uh, you lose one grip for that. Can I replace that one with my five? Uh, yeah, you can. That would be a pass. So you can place the one with a five. That's a nine. So that's a success. So you no longer have the five for the day. Uh, it's just sort of a scary thing to suddenly be surrounded and by... A handful of these other large loping creatures. There's four of them that just start to. Catrick wants here. to run in and try to retrieve O'Hare. Okay, so you start running it's in. Be, to most people, it might be daunting and scary, but yeah. I know inside that I'm a winner. Let's uh, let's <laughs> go ahead. Oh, You're about to be a dead winner. <laughs> let's go ahead and do initiative really quick. Hang on one sec while I get some stuff set up. I just needed a placeholder for. So, um, one of the things I had to change a little bit about our the way we do initiative is because it was, wasn't working out right. Just remember that if you're <clears throat> using a heavy weapon, it's a minus one penalty. So you just put minus one into your initiative box. If you're using a, a light weapon, um, it's minus ones to damage. Don't worry about initiative. If you're using a long weapon, like a spear or something like that, that's also a minus one. And so once that's in, just go ahead and hit initiative and we'll punch it in. Yeah, would Horian be able to switch from his shield to his sword while we're doing the initiative roll? Uh, no. Um, I would say you said you had the the lantern out and the shield, so we'll we'll, we'll stick with that. Okay, so then I got to change my initiative. So how would that work then? If I roll initiative with those things, but then I use my turn to switch, just means you use that... your action on your turn to you have to spend an action okay. to switch some stuff out. I uh, be like, son of a bitch. I can't, I can't. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, I'm just punch. I have to punch him in manually, unfortunately. Uh, what'd you get long? Uh, I don't think it came up. There we go. Uh, you got a six. All right. Justin, what'd you get? A five. Five. No, no, no. Four. Okay. Uh, what'd you get, Derek? I think I got a two, but I'm just making sure my shield doesn't add to it. Uh, your shield Doesn't shouldn't like do anything. It. It's only a heavy weapon that would affect it. Okay. So you're probably good. Oh, they got a f they got a five. Okay. Um, you said a four, Justin. Okay. Yes. So let's start it up. As you can see, these these loping, tall, slender, strange-looking hair puppety type stuff. They're just kind of their shoulders are up. Their arms are kind of hanging down. Everything's just a little bit longer and more lanky and ropey than you would expect to see of like a normal kind of humanoid. And Leon, you're kind of the first, you're the first to act. What do you want to do? We will light a torch. Okay. Sounds good. All right. You want to move or anything? I'll move into the graveyard. Okay. I'll so you'll be behind everyone. So you'll move into now you're, we'll say you're in this sort of same vague zone as them. Um, <laughs> Please hold figure is my <laughs> exactly. Uh, then after that, it's going to be Catrick. All right, so I am going to. Um, try to shoot at it with my longbow. OK, uh, so go ahead and roll just normal uh, unless there's something else you're looking to do. I don't. Uh, yeah, I can't think of a way to get any upper hand on this so okay all right so you get the longbow out and you just try to shoot at one of them that's yeah. gonna that is unfortunately going to be a miss oh, do i add anything for that? uh well it's your it's you you roll the stat check for the weapon so what's the if you're using a longbow it should be wit so yeah just, so it's five six would be my to hit i'm sorry say that again Six would be my to hit. Do you have a modifier for your wit at all? Your wits? Uh, yeah, I just have a one, so that's a four. So your total five, is six. a seven, right? Oh no, I see what you mean. Yeah, because you got a yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is a miss, unfortunately, as okay. the arrow just goes sailing past. It kind of nicks like a tiny little bit of hair, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. Just sort of frays and creates a bit of a split end. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, then it's going to be the... Uh, I'm calling them villagers. I'm just using a placeholder. Uh, mm -hmm. But these loping, strange puppets. Um, three of them are going to surround O'Hare as he tries to back away. Uh, and before he can kind of fully make it out of the graveyard, um, they're just going to surround him. Now, with monsters, uh, if multiple identifying identical monsters, this is a kind of a gang up rule, we haven't done it yet. Uh, if multiple identical monsters in the same zone attack a single character, you roll their attacks together with an instance of upper hand for each additional monster beyond the first. So I have two instances of upper hand. So basically... It's a way, like, they're not all three going to attack him, but they're going to get upper hand is what's happening here. Got it. So they get four D6s. Let me switch this to public. So you can see those rolls now. All right. So they're going to drop that one. Uh, so they're going to hit a AC and armor of... Okay. Uh, they hit an armor of eight. Can they? Uh, well, they can hit an armor of eight. What's your What's your armor, O'Hare? Your AC? It is at eight. Okay, so their eight will hit, uh, which means they will they will use the six for damage, uh, which which will crit. Um, so as you all watch, O'Hare begin to be slowly surrounded um, by hair. By hair, O'Hare is being surrounded by hair. Uh, they begin to just instead like they're they're pounding on him and beating him and they're wrapping and all these tiny like hairs begin to string and, and you can notice that some of his skin gets punctured as these little twines of hair begin to slink, slink inside. Uh, you don't have to roll a critical hit for these uh, as they have a special effect. Um, how much vigor do you have left, Justin? I only have three vigor left. Okay. So he is laying on the ground and he is dying now, surrounded by these three, these three hairs. Yep. Uh, then it's gonna be O'Hare's turn. Uh, there's really nothing you can do once you go down, which you currently are. Uh, you just have to kind of wait for someone to help you. Uh, Sophie, uh, you are next. I regret. Um, <laughs> can I uh, <laughs> lay some hands on him? So one of the things you can do is uh, when someone goes down, you can try to do like a heroic effort where you can like run towards them and try to save them. Okay. Uh, you can do that. Um, or you can just move in and do your lay on hands if you want. It's fine. Um, Let's try a heroic effort first since that sounds cool. Okay. So let me pull up the cheat sheet on that. Um, so... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, That's okay. If he dies, I can resurrect him and use his body in battle. Okay, you actually don't need to do it yet. Uh, it's that's used. Um, that's used as a, like a reaction. If so, if one of them tries oh, okay. to like coup de gras him, that would be like your, you would use that as a reaction. So just you could take your turn if you want, or whatever you want to do. Could I? So I'm in a graveyard. Can I use my spirits of uh, the beyond? to resurrect a corpse. Okay. Um, you can certainly tap into that. As you start to sort of channel through your magics, you, you, you kind of get the feeling you're not, sh you're not you're, like you can, you can, you can hear like the, the corpses within the graveyard kind of, some of them are starting to crawl. Like one of them are, is moving around. A few of them already seem kind of disturbed in some way. Like there's like this, like a call from the great beyond, as if a few of them seem impossible to reach. You try to reach out and kind of figure out which spirits are in the graveyard, which can be reached, which are there, which are responding. A few of them are just locked out from you. 
Uh, Ooh, so okay. read the read the specific dis, uh, description of your ability. So I can spend uh, an action point and a point of grip to reanimate a corpse to serve me until the end of combat. Okay. The corpse's stats are one brawn, one okay. wit, zero will, six vigor, initiative negative three. So you see this hand pop up through the ground and through like the hair, that silvery white hair, and begin to kind of pull itself up. It's got a mix of flesh and bone and sinew still left uh, but it's just like a strange looking old man <laughs> kind of looking around um, he's right there ready to go um, what do you want him to do Excellent. let's say he can go on your turn so what do you want him to do um, attack just one of the nearest ones okay so there's one that's kind of solo that was running towards like the gate that didn't okay. that didn't choose to attack O'Hare. So you can go to that one pretty easily. Sure. Okay, so go ahead and roll uh, 3d6s. And do your normal attack. Okay. Uh, what were the what were the stats again on them? Uh let me pull that back up. So it looks like you can do. Hmm. I have it open somewhere already, I think. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> I have too many tabs. It's just on your character sheet. There we go. So, one brawn, one wit, zero will, six vigor. Okay, so we'll say plus one to your roll. You can do... You need to hit a eight. Uh, so you can do that with five and two in the plus one, which means you can do four damage. Okay. So you just, this thing just starts lumbering towards this this strange hair creature and just starts to hack through it. And as you do, you can see it just the whole arm cuts through the torso and it's a brutal hit and it sweeps through and it pulls out this huge chunk of hair that kind of wraps and sticks to the to the bone uh, of your risen corpse. Um, but the creature is still uh, is still up. Uh, then it's gonna be. Horian's turn. Um, all right. I guess all I can do is move into the graveyard and then as my action, uh, take out my great sword. I'm assuming that using an ability is considered an act or an advancement is considered so, an action. I'm assuming you have like your great sword, like on maybe like a scabbard on your back or something. Yeah. If you right. want, we can say you just drop the shield and your lantern and just pull it out. That's fine. It's like a free okay. action. But it would mean dropping the shield and the lantern like outside the graveyard on the ground. That's fine. Okay. Okay. And so that means you can still have an action. Then I guess I would move to one of the fur balls that's uh, above O'Hare. Okay. And I'll um So real quick, the advancement, does that if I were to like use spend a grip points to have upper hand for my combat, would that count as my action, or would the attack with that count as the action? The attack with that would count as the action. Okay, so I'll spend a point of grip, so now I'm down to four. Okay. Um, and yeah, once per combat, spend a point of grip for the rest of combat attacks with the weapon of the type, which is heavy, um, upper hand. So I'll just swing at one of these uh, ugly bastards. Okay. And it's a brawn, it's, uh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it should be brawn for great sword. Cool. Okay, you need a hit, uh, an eight. Uh, so you can easily do that uh, and take that five for damage. Now, with the great sword, a five or a six causes a crit. So if I use both of the fours and then the five, it's a crit, correct? That's, that is correct. Nice. Uh, okay, I will do that. So you do a total of six damage because your great sword uh, does an extra damage. But the five crits, you get plus one. So you're oh, doing yeah. six damage. And then I got to roll the injury for this thing as well. And that's going to be that one. Um, so you cut through its head and you can see half, like half of its head has, has been ripped apart. Uh, and whether this thing has eyes or not, but you can tell that whatever head portion there is on this creature has been radically cut through. Like there's like a huge wedge missing. Um, and you would imagine that that might make it difficult. It's kind of starting to move his head around wildly as if it's struggling to, to sort of sense where everything is. Uh, all right, then we're going to go to Leon. I'll also go up to one of the dolls and hit it with the torch, see if it catches fire at all. Okay, you can roll this attack with upper hand. What would you say the torch 
a stat would be? Um, it should probably say it in like take a look on the your equipment list. There should be, I think, wits. Oh, it says wits. Right, yeah, nice. so roll wits. Okay, so you've got, uh, yeah, you can definitely do it a five, a two, and your two would put you at nine, which means you can do two damage. Uh, I will go ahead and double the damage, and you will definitely see that. Uh, are you attacking the same one that Horian is it does this attacked? Same one that Sophie's corpse attacked, or one of the other two? So the one Horian was on. Okay, so you go up to the one that Horian is on, and this thing gets set ablaze, and you can see it starting to, as it's as it's moving about, it's thrashing wildly as the fur all completely catches on fire, um, and it seems to be focusing on trying to like like swat it out but every time it does a different part of its body catches fire from the torch um okay so then cat track it is your turn okay so i am going to um basically shoot with my longbow again i am going to try to shoot the one that um sophie's uh risen corpse was also attacking Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll your check. Um, I got... Um, and it's a wit, so it's a plus two. You know, you can just hit the wits button. And it'll roll it It'll roll it for you. Um, okay, and then you can roll so, your damage extra if you want. Um, so I'd only have two for damage. Okay. Uh, and you're rolling all, and it's, uh, with a longbow. Okay, so two points of damage. Uh, yep. Yeah, and so you, this time the the arrow buries deep into what looks like a like a knotted, tough part of hair right in the, mm -hmm. the center of the, of the, the torso. Um, then they're going to go, and the one that's on the corpse is going to just go ahead and start swinging away at the corpse. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, will not... Well, what's your which what's, what's the armor on your on your corpse there, Sophie? Do you know? Um, I don't think they have any armor. All right, so then, it's seven is basically a, a something without armor. So we're gonna mm -hmm. say seven. Um, okay. So that's a set. So I can do I can do that, and I do one damage to it. So it takes one point of damage. Okay. Uh, the one on fire is going to continue to try to. You can see it, like freaking out as it's trying to put itself out. And then it's just going to tip over and fall, and the ground begins to catch on fire. Uh, the other oh, two, geez. one of them will turn towards Leon, one of them will turn towards Horian and attack. Uh, you'll see the first on Horian uh, will miss. Uh, well, yeah, definitely misses because you're what, eight or nine? Yeah, my armor's eight. <laughs> it smells like burnt hair. Uh, and then um, the next one will attack. Uh, Leon uh, Leon I can do an 8 does 8 hit you uh, I have 8 armor okay, so it does hit you take 2 points of damage okay Okay. Uh, and that is their turn uh, O'Hare is continuing to just as you're, as you're stuck there and you're, you're feeling the life kind of flash before your eyes you, f you can feel that there's this huge strange tuft of fur that's kind of digging its way under the skin of your arms. Uh, Sophie. Uh, I am going to lay hands on um, okay. O'Hare. Alright, so you move up. Burn your... You gotta burn grip for that, right? I do. Yes, just one point. Okay, so you burn your one point. And how much health? Do you, how much? How much healing do you do? D three plus my will. So my will is one. Okay, so roll D three or D six divided by two. Uh, why? Two, so three. Okay. You get three bigger. Uh, all right. So that'll actually get you into the positive, and you'll be able to do something next time around. Uh, if it lasts long, Horian. Um, since the burning one fell over, or I'll just attack the one that attacked me, and I'll be like, you call that a hit? Let me show you how it's done. And I will take a swipe. That is a big swipe. Ooh. Go for it. Holy shit. Well, that's a crit. 
crit. This is the same one you've been. Yeah. The same, so the one that you were attacking previously has fallen down. Looks to be defeated. Yeah. So, you turn to so the one that took the one that attacked me, I attacked it back. Yeah. That'll be another crit. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll it. Uh, no effect this time though. Uh, but I still take. <laughs> I did not hit seven <laughs> points of damage. I still take seven points of damage, which is yeah, a that's a big chunk. Hit. Yeah. So you see, like one, like this huge, like thick dreadlock, almost like it's like it's. It almost feels like it's uh, like it's a hardened limb just lops completely off, like this extra third or third limb, and you just not and just falls to the ground, and you hear this very faint. Rah! You don't know where it's like where on earth that thing's coming from, but it is. Uh, all right, then you go back to Leon. Turn my attention to the one that's hit me, and I'll swing at that one. Uh, go ahead. Uh, same thing. It's upper hands that you're using a torch. Wow. That's a really Fine. bad roll. Um, so you drop the one. If only we had that extra five. D6. Upper hand with attacks is four D6s. If O'Hare hadn't used oh. that five to keep oh. his sanity, we could have used it. Oh, uh, okay. So you get a three. So you can drop one of the ones, which means you have seven plus two. You can get to a nine to do uh, to do one damage. Uh, but That'll I'm doubling be. it since it's fire. And mm -hmm. you are, yeah. So this is on the one that Horian attacked, or this is on one of them. One that attacked me. Okay, got it. Okay, and, and then this little. You didn't I get as look. much fire in this one. You only got like a tiny little bit, but yeah, it's it's definitely caught on fire. Can it still move? Yeah, you get a move. Um, you're gonna have to do since you're up close to one of these. You're gonna have to do an escape check. So just do a wit check to get away to avoid an opportunity. All right, I have nimble dog, mm -hmm. which gives me upper hand while escaping. Perfect. This is what you're doing. So roll, roll, roll your wit. Upper hand. Uh, that's good. 11. Eleven is good. And so yeah, you're able to definitely get away. It's a little bit, I guess it sees the fire on its arm, and plus the fire is spreading on the ground as well, where the first one you attacked had fallen. So it's a little distracted. So by the time it notices you moving away, it swings out at you, but you get away fast enough. Uh, so you're no longer engaged uh, with one of them. Uh, so then Catrack comes around to you. What I would like to do, I'm trying to find a way to get upper hand. Can I move in so that I'm closer to an area that's now ablaze? So that when I kind of pull my arrow back to shoot it, that I can get the arrow tip on fire? You want to go dip your... Okay. Um, yeah. So that I can... Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, well, there's also like, I would say, we could say that Horian dropped his... Uh, dropped his lantern on the ground. Oh yeah, uh, still on the outside. Probably okay. shattered a little bit. Uh, it gets fixable, no problem. But like we'll say, since the tufts of hair were, uh, were right at the edge of the gate where Horian dropped everything, like a little bit of fire is kind of caught up. So you can reach down and do that there. So yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So all. Oh, so Ashley, this... thanks for those bits. Wits with upper hand. Then when uh, when I die tomorrow, you can take over the channel, and all those bits will be yours. Okay. You're not dying. Yep. Sorry, that's right. how it works. You hit a certain so, age in life, and your cells just uh, stop doing good things. I'll drop the one. Sure. Well, it's so, upper hand, so did you roll your extra d6? So you I did. The so one. I have a six, a one, a six, and a two. So I'm dropping the one. You can hit. Six and yep. two will be able to hit, and that's then it's a crit. crit. Okay. So you're going to do six points of damage. Let me roll. Uh, lose a point of brawn. So which one are you attacking? You're attacking the one that the corpse is on? Yeah. Okay, that's enough to actually take it down the six points, Ooh. and you can see that the second arrow comes in. You you see where the first arrow went, and it and it landed perfectly, and the second arrow comes in almost the exact same spot, and this thing kind of crumbles uh, to the ground. Like, ah. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right. Next up is the creatures, um, of which two of them are still up and they're both next to Horian in the laying body of O'Hare, who is now awake. They're going to both go ahead and attack Horian, uh, which means I get an upper hand for this. So I'm rolling this at 46, 46 is dropping the lowest. Um, I drop the two, uh, which means I can hit a 10 AC. I can hit a nine or a 10 AC. Does nine work? Uh, yeah, I have an armor of eight. All right, so you take five points of damage, not a crit, uh, but it's five points of damage. Wow. Uh, Thanks as, a lot, Leon. As they are just battering you with these. Ow, that hurt. 
Uh, they this continuing to batter you with these like really thick weave braid braided like kind of like almost like dreadlock arms just like whipping uh, whipping you. Um, and you can just feel the like like these these lashes, welts, these welts and these cuts and stuff starting to appear uh, in like the the parts of your your skin that are exposed. Um, their arms, your like their limbs are surprisingly thick. They look like it looks like you know well cleaned hair, like a kind of a shimmering shine to it. Uh, but once they hit, they actually hurt considerably. Oh, hair! You have like one health, man. What do you want to do? You're laying on the ground. You've got these two creatures that are that are just smacking away at Hori, and they don't seem to be paying attention to you currently. What do you want to do? Um, I'm gonna get up and move away. Okay. First, can I do that? Uh, yeah, roll a wit check. Uh, witch check to try to escape out of here. Um, I was going to give you upper hand because they seem to be focusing on, on Horian, so roll an extra d6. Um, yeah, you're fine. You get away just just fine. So you, so you start to scramble, then you step up, and you start moving a, a zone away. So you're no I'm longer... I'm coughing up. Yeah. I'm Bro. coughing up. I was like, oh, it's okay, guys. I, I got this. <laughs> back me up. <laughs> For my action, I'm going to do my rallying shout. Okay. Um, which what it does is and magically delicious. Character can spend an action and point of grip uh, to grant each ally who can hear them point of vigor. So I'm okay. Busy. So what do you say? Uh, uh, so what I'm going to say is, uh, don't compare yourself to others. Okay. And remember, your business income will continue to increase. <laughs> oh hair my blood's out more than your blood i have to compare myself this hurts man everyone roll a grip check for that jesus right uh, i feel like i okay. lost a figure for that i feel like i'm being sold a timeshare <laughs> I mean, well we did you know just fly you up here like just a free meal whatever. uh all right sophie you're up got two of them left they're both on orion now one of them's got a little tuft of uh a tuft of it is on fire Okay, uh, I'm gonna like uh, channel, I guess, my corpse to go attack the one that's on fire. Uh, so we said that's yeah. yeah. What uh, we said that was two d six or three. Uh, you're trying to attack it. You're trying. You're just yeah. trying. To, yeah. So it's it's when you're attacking, it's always three d six because like okay. you use two of them for the hit, and then the third die you use for damage. Oh, that's a good roll. Oh, uh, that's D8s. That's why it's a good roll. Got to oh. use D6s, cheater. Oops. Sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cheater. <laughs> They're the squares. I had the <laughs> one through zero bar over it. All right, so the, you need to you need to do an eight, uh, which you so can, I can do two damage. Two damage, and so you start beating away at the one that's on fire. You don't add anything. Uh, not oh. with my corpse. Yeah, they have. You have. They have brawn. Uh, it has one brawn. So that means you could do three damage to it then, because that means oh. you could use the you could use the, the three two. damage. Yeah, so it does. Got three. it. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. It's still up. Good catch, Melissa. Still up. Uh, and then, Uh I'm gonna finish off the one that I attacked the last round, where I chopped off an arm or something. Yeah, so I'm just taking this another thing swing. Is not looking great. Um, That's another crit because I've rolled a five, or yeah, I can even five, use this. Six, six. Oh my could god! Any of <laughs> That's a roll. Jesus, Corian's like. Guys, I got this. Uh. Uh, I don't think there's any like bonuses that you can get, but like we're just gonna say you lop its head off and it just flops to the ground uh, wildly. Wow. Six figure. And there's just Orion, one I'm left. Proud. I'm proud of you. You just did 12 damage to it. Oh no, I'm sorry. You did 13 damage to it because you got a great sword that does plus one. I love so great swords. A ton of damage. Holy crap. Wow. Um, Not as much as Josh's 18 from last week. But, well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Horian's feeling a little... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Horian's feeling a little insecure. Just be careful, Derek. I fired Josh. Oh, that's right. For that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it in two turns. It's fine. I split 12 over two. I'm just trying to play under the radar. Okay. Uh, Leon, <laughs> it is your turn. They're all The only one that's left is the one that you had set on fire. And you can see the fire starting to grow on it a bit. Um, there's there's also fire that's spreading on the ground at this point uh, that some people are going to have to be careful about when they try to get out of here. I think they got this. So I'll just head out of the graveyard. Okay, that's your movement. You still have an action. Is there something you wanted to do? Uh... Hold 
I'll throw my torch at it. Okay, fair enough. Um, go ahead and roll uh, 3d6. Um, if you hit Horian. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say not upper hand. Well, actually, no, just make it upper hand. It's fine. Make it upper hand. You can roll an extra d6. I know. All right, you drop the one. Uh, the five into three make an eight, which will hit, which means you can do five damage. Five damage. And we'll say that I've been kind of giving you a little bit of a bonus for using the fire here. This thing bursts into this huge flame. Um, it starts flailing around, and then it falls down, and then this... It's almost as if a fire onto, like, gasoline just erupts. As all of the hair in this graveyard has started to, to burn. Leon, you got out, I'm going to say, because you said you moved. Um, uh, I think, Cat Track, you're, you're kind of still on the edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody else, I think, is still inside. Sophie, I think you're still inside, right? Okay, so all of you, go ahead and make a... Uh, yeah, you moved. So we'll say you can probably climb over the edge of, of not necessarily to the gate, but you could probably climb over the over the over the fence somewhere. But Sophie and Horian make wit checks to try to escape uh, without kind of getting caught on fire. Would this be against odds since we're surrounded by it? Uh, well, I mean, if now it is. Uh, oh. No, 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 it's <laughs> not. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. No, I wasn't sure. Normal's fine. Just just roll it normally. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh wait, no, that's Sophie. <laughs> Horian's fine. Not any better. I burned. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's so funny. Like, oh, I felt. Oh no, it's not me. I'm cool. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Sophie, uh, you're gonna take. Uh, let's see, it's gonna roll. You're gonna take D3 worth of damage. So D6 divided by two. Take two points of damage as you burn yourself on your way out. Uh, Horian, you're able to like just. You're able to navigate around some of these larger blazes uh, and. Nothing really kind of catches you, but all of you have now evacuated this uh, this graveyard, which is completely ablaze. Um, yeah, I was about to say, is there any? So, like, Horian's gonna look to see if the fire can like spread closer to the village, or if it'll kind of just burn itself out in the confines of the graveyard. Uh, it's gonna spread, but you don't think it's gonna spread upwards to the village? Like, you can definitely see some of the surrounding trees and bushes around this graveyard are kind of starting to catch a blaze as well here and there as the flames begin to flicker. Do I? Do we know if, like, if I were to use my heater shield to like scoop up dirt and like throw it at the fire? Do you know if that would make any difference of like putting it out? I mean, it sounds like a good idea, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> Horian's gonna call to you like, we probably should put this out before we uh, make the town hate us. Uh, just an idea, as he's like shoveling dirt with his shield. Okay, I have a shovel, so I'll help him contain it. Hey! <laughs> so you guys go around shoveling up uh, a bunch of dirt and throwing it on the fire uh, as best you can to keep it contained to the graveyard. Anybody else doing anything to help with this? Um. <laughs> Should I uh, summon some more corpses to stop, drop, and roll on the fire? <laughs> with, that, with that help? I mean, it would not help, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just get, imagining this I don't whole, get just points for creativity. Oh, you totally get places. points for creativity. <laughs> That's, I, sure. Can I summon an army of bodies to just smother the fire with themselves? <laughs> <Okay. That's, laughs> these, I'll do it. Can I do it? These poor interned people, you rip them from their graves. Uh, you got How much grip are you spending to do this? Um... Remember, if you go to zero grip, that's effectively you're dead. You either die of a heart attack or a sh- stroke or shock, okay, or you I'll run spend, off into the hills. I'll spend six grip. Okay. Okay. So, so spend- I have seven bodies. There's seven bodies that are up now. All Holy of them are helping shit. smack down. So this half the graveyard is now up out of the graves, <laughs> ripping through, and they're... Some of them have like little rugs that they're trying to like use to like beat down the fire. Others are just they rolling around. They did the monster it. mash. It is. A it was a graveyard <laughs> smash. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very strange, very strange situation that's happening here. But we'll say over the course of like an hour or so, you manage to to keep it in check. But like once all is said and done, like there's definitely a lot of scorching in the graveyard and within 
We'll say a radius of about like 10 to 20 feet as well. So branding the grave river, everything's just blackened. So come, some of the trees get hit, some of the bushes get hit, those types of things. But the fire does, does in fact go out. Uh, and it's fairly and late at this point. Yeah, so. to, to channel my inner O'Hare, it went from smelling like burnt hair to smelling like barbecue. <laughs> it does, yes. Jeez. So, yeah, this uh, this you figured out what the shadows were. The there's no hair left in the in this this graveyard. Um, speaking of hair, oh, Harry, you uh, you feel like a you don't feel great. You feel a little uh, just feel a little uh kind of awkward you know like you're like i don't know something's not quite right you're a little off in some way just feeling a little... he won't say he won't admit it though he'll just say great things about it yeah Good work guys i feel great today and also that got it escalated quickly huh <laughs> anyways great work though <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys... we all all of us together worked equally hard to solve the problems I'm yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I seem to recall you kind of just fallen uh, did you trip on something it's, oh, i goodness. was getting a better angle to see if it would be better um great <laughs> everyone i don't even remember how that even started but good job so we go back up the hill and tell everybody like well we figured out what the problem was uh, I'm going to stay behind and put the bodies back in the ground. Okay. Yeah, sister, I don't know if this is normal for your, uh, your covenant or your kind, but, uh, I don't know if anyone saw that. They may not like their, uh, I don't care. Whatever. Do your thing. And yeah, y'all head back up, back up. Enjoy <laughs> some more mutton. I'll be up in a minute. I got to go find my blood and put it back <laughs> in me. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it's it's fairly late at night. So, what do you all want to do? Orion's exhausted. He wants to go to sleep. Yeah, I think we'll the tell them you? that we've solved the problem, and hopefully, they won't be back. So yeah, tomorrow. you you go up the ridge, and what? <laughs> what the hell y'all doing down there? Like, I mean, we were going to come down to help. We really were. But like, we're like, that's a lot of fire. And uh, <laughs> fire hurts, man. You know? So, uh, Borean being in a very foul mood is just going to stomp toward the stables and just say, we were working. And yeah. just walk away. Okay. Thanks. How we solved your problem. Uh, okay. Right. Did you smell the burned hair? Oh, I mean, I can still smell it. Waft this way? Yes, that was us taking care of your problem. Okay. Uh, thanks. Appreci no appreciate. more hair puppets. Hair puppets? What the hell is a hair puppet? Well, you'll never know. Okay. I love how just creepy <laughs> the blitz is. <laughs> Right. Okay. No more hair puppets. I don't know what they were, but you said you took care of them. All right. They were coming up out of the hair on the graveyard, and they attacked us, so we burned them. That makes sense. <laughs> Just kind of... I, I don't know how to react to these things, but... Everything seems to you could say thank you. Just saying, I mean, you guys were kind of standing and looking at it, and we don't even live here, and then we came and took care of your problem. Oh, we went and, you know, said fire and whatnot. We were going to get help. People were going to get some some buckets, mm -hmm. and and you can see you can see a handful <laughs> of people are coming up. They got buckets filled with water. Like, they were coming to help, you know. Everyone was asleep. It's pretty late at night. It's a rough day. You it know? has been a long day. It, 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 it has been. I think I'm gonna go to sleep too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and so like you know, the others start wandering off at that point. <laughs> All right. Off to the the heroes. We come and we save the town and we sleep in the stable. Okay. So you uh, go ahead and you start sleeping uh in the stables. Uh, is anyone else doing anything tonight? Uh I'm collecting flesh and I'm eating it. It's uh, rotten. What it's kind, cooked. What kind of flesh are you trying to get? The corpse flesh. 
Okay, so you, you brought them up and you're trying to get them. Um, so I'm going to say roll. Uh, you can either roll a wit or a will to try to like do this without people seeing you. Even your own party, by the way, would like completely socially outcast you and probably turn you in if they saw I know. you cannibalistic. They all stuff. went to bed. Uh, That's true. Horian was very did tired. Did they all go? Horian's gone. Katrick is gone. O'Hare and Leon. I'm a Y'all hit the line, so who knows what I might see if she does it poorly. Okay. What? I'm slow. I was, I'm beating the shit out of, so I'm a little slow getting back up the hill. You're a brat. You just want me to get in trouble. If you miss the if you miss the roll, then there's an excuse of someone seeing you. That's what it is. If okay. You don't miss- yeah. Go ahead and just go ahead and roll a wit or a will. Uh, you can do it at upper hand since you waited for everyone. Uh, will could just be like smarts if you want to use your smarts, or wit is just like trying to be skulky about it. I only use well because I have one and a eight. Damn it. Yeah. Um, you start call- you start it, c- cutting through it, and you realize Fuck that you. like there's O'Hare halfway up the up the ridge line still I'm looking down. Like <laughs> go ahead and roll against the odds. Uh, or excuse me. Go go ahead and roll an against the odds observation check, O'Hare. So just three d sixes and drop the highest. You need a nine. So oh my, you got a nine. Wow! <laughs> you rolled a six to six and three. Literally a uses six. he uses a five to not take. He did nothing damage this to whole time, yeah, and he then he's like, goes I'm down gonna be a brat fight. and hang out in the back. <laughs> you little shit. You see, and he gave me shit about asking the fire question. You uh, see Sophie going up to the corpses that she had raised that have now fallen inert. Uh, maybe a few of them have crawled back into their graves, and she's like carving chunks out of them and putting them in a bag. It's okay, Sophie. Just convince them of what you told us. You send their souls to heaven by doing special things with the meat bag. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm just like, what, what you got? What the fuck? So this is what you see. I don't. I don't know, if Sophie. Sophie obviously wouldn't have been doing this if she knew she was being watched. So yeah. You know that you've you've seen her. You've seen Sophie cutting chunks of flesh off of these corpses that she raised. Sophie, you don't necessarily know that O'Hare saw you, though. Yes. So what happens is I look at it. I'm like, I'm sure she's got a good reason. All right. She looks like she's having a great time. <laughs> sure, she has a good reason. What the hell? Are Justin's you? character has now got a uh, is now a liability and might find himself not getting any more lay of hands and might die. I don't know that yet. Oh, but wait, if yeah, he yeah, does yeah. try to confront me, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So you all decide to turn in for the night or hit the hay as Leon so cleverly said. Yes. yes. And I find the least urinated hay and make a pillow out of it for okay. my head. Um, and you have food. Some of you ate the mutton tonight. Uh, anybody not have the mutton tonight? I did not have the mutton. And I got glared at for it. Cat track didn't either. And so you're just yeah, using veggies only. You're just using basic yeah. rations then, Horian. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I ate a lot of mutton. Okay. A lot. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say, so resting and what you recover is dependent upon like a few different things. One of them is like safety, quality of food and, you know, and like the, the kind of quality of where you're sleeping and since you're sleeping, you're all sleeping, you know, it's okay. It's not great. It's not, it's not a mattress or anything like that it's not entirely secure, but it's not so bad. Some of you actually had proper food. Others, you're just are just eating like hardback, you know, uh, hardtack like food. So, I'll say, Horian, you get three vigor. Uh, Rest of you can get four if you actually ate at the inn and ate some of the food, like proper food, even if it wasn't the nicest. It was still, still something. Damn, I played myself. I thought the food had the stuff in it. That's why I didn't need it. It might have. Well, for me, it, it's oh, only no. based off of quality and quantity of food. So, is it more for me then? Uh, like it's not based off of like anything but that. Uh, you're. N- I wouldn't go all the way up to a five, just because you're not. Um, it's just it's just quality of food. That's it. Yeah, because I'm. I have a hole in the ground. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, okay. Here's our food servitors. Um, I'll say. Yeah, since of that, since you ate a ton of food, you can go ahead and take five. Okay. 
And remember, hey, everyone eight. else has another one because I gave them one in the battle. So you have an extra vigor. Okay. During yeah. The- you, st- you all still have a max cap from the from the beginning. And those of you who leveled up from our last adventure, you get, you know, you ha- you, you remember that your cap raised slightly. Um, oh, Harriers is still your brawn plus six is what your max vigor can be. Um, okay. And I'll say, uh, oh, Harry, you can also get a grip back too. Uh, that's the other thing. Depending on how high you go, you can sometimes get grip. Morning comes. Uh, it's a uh, kind of over again foggy morning, a little bit, a uh, little mist shifting through the streets. All of you wake up to <coughs> <coughs> and you look over and you can see that there's O'Hare <coughs> and he coughs into his hand this big old white silvery fur ball. Uh, as he gets up, and all of you are, or this is this is what you see uh, when you wake up in the morning. Orion's immediately gonna be like, and y'all wondered why I was eating my rations and glaring at you from the door. High ground, Horian. Well, I don't know if that was <laughs> high road, Horian. <laughs> Seems coincidental light that I'm see fun. Yeah, he did I get hit pretty hard in the graveyard. He was laying down in the hair at one point. One man's uh, one man's vomit hair is another man's treasure, I say. Okay. So or... what do you do this morning? Well, how do you feel there? Isis. Just Isis. I mean, other than... Well, yesterday, wasn't there... Um, there was a couple choices yesterday, right? It was go deal with the graveyard. Um, He's like, let's right. ignore the fact that I'm barfing up hair. Yeah, you have this big old yeah. hairball on your hand. Uh, let's see. There are poachers that are around. Uh, there's something about the like the grottos or whatever from the yeah, let's go screaming sheep skull. Uh, and then Horian overheard something about Ram's Head Hill, but there was no follow-up. And then there's the temple. I'm fine. Nothing to worry about here. Let's just move on with what we've been trying to do. And uh, I'll let you all lead. I have to go shave my throat. So go ahead. Whatever you need. (laughs) So what do you want to do with the hairball? I'm just going to put it in my bag. Okay. Put it in your inventory. (laughs) You put a note to yourself that you have a hairball. Look at this later. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Got a snort from Ashley. Uh, So what's the plan? Didn't the noggin guy say something about puppets? Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah, it's related to the graveyard stuff. We could link that together. Maybe we could go to the grotto and tell them that we took care of the pair puppet things. I mean, there's probably still puppets in the grotto, but we could kill them too. And maybe they might help me. Oh, just just, the fact just like that. I'm that. up a large amount of hair follicles, and they might be able to help me out with it. Not well, that I'm then. concerned. I'm feeling great. Maybe if, put he, some... if he starts barfing too much, we should, we should gut him. That's weird you say that. Um, <laughs> I would suggest not, but whatever the group thinks. So what does so probably the, group the think? closest thing that we would see is the uh, church. Yeah, like that's, that's the in the, that's in town. To... Yeah where we're at hmm? we can start there first because that's the closest thing and then yeah uh, say we take this one to the temple and see if the lord can work in mysterious ways in him okay uh who's all going to the temple i mean obviously me okay uh anybody else uh, probably i would also go it's close by yeah just yeah, yeah. okay um all right so yeah you um you head over to the temple again it's 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 a run down sort of dilapidated building now with some light of day uh you can definitely see that this hasn't seen paint in quite some time it's uh it's faded there's chips of it coming off um definitely some rotten wood here and there uh the steps that lead up to the doors to the temple are 
a little fractured here and there, like splintered as if something heavy fell on them and no one ever replaced a step, but they're easy enough to, to bypass. Um, you can see that there's a, like I said, there's a, like a, a, a gallows, like off to the right. Um, this little, it's a little like the, the actual, the actual post hanging, holding up the, you know, some of them are crooked. It doesn't look to be entirely usable. Uh, a couple empty or broken down crates around. You see there's a man uh, kind of just sitting and sort of staring up at the noose a bit. Um, he's got like a, a baby in his hand. He's got like this swaddled baby and he's just sort of sitting there and every now and then you see him reach over and on one of the other one of the barrels he picks up what looks like a, a big old bottle or something and he takes a, takes a swig. Uh, when you go inside, when you open the door to the temple, uh, you can see that there's a couple rows of, of benches. Uh, there is a... Uh, there looks to have once been some kind of fountain right on the inside, uh, but it's dried out. There's no liquid in it. Um, there's like an empty little alms for the poor bowl as well that doesn't have anything in it. Uh, there's like a little tuft of hair. Um, you can see that there's a couple people that are sitting in the benches. They're kind of at morning prayer. Uh, there's a... Uh, you would imagine is like either a, a priest or a nun or something um, up to the front. They have a robe on and you're like staring at them from the back as this dark robe. Um, there's this like, the, like there's all sorts of like symbols of some kind of matronly woman. So it's probably whatever deity that this particular temple serves. Uh, nothing unfamiliar to Sophie. Pretty standard. Um, what do you want to do? Is there a way to discern if this is the same church that Sophie goes for? Like, you, is there you can ask her. Oi, Sophie. What? Is your sort of uh, religious affiliation? No. <laughs> okay. Good talk. <laughs> Uh, so no, uh, Justin, it's not her. Uh, <laughs> but she like explains like what it is. Okay, yeah, it's it's again, it's a fairly common religion. Um, it's nothing. It's nothing that uh, stands out of the ordinary. Um, okay, what are the rest of you doing? Catra's gonna go wander over to the guy looking up at the gallows. Okay, so you see, and like as you get a little closer, you can just hear kind of a small sobbing swig of whatever is in that big brown bottle and then puts it down and then you hear like a a little bit of like a, a crying of some kind coming from the baby and he's just like uh, looks down quiet <sighs> and like a big sigh uh sir this is what are you doing sitting over here I'm sure there's better vistas elsewhere it kind of looks up at you a little bit of a wobble in the head and the neck kind of like the head's a little too heavy no uh, I, I like the fresh air thank you Shh. you um and i'll kind of gesture over towards the gallows. Does this have a significance for you? What? Um, oh, uh, no, 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 no significance. You ever just, you ever just want it all the end, you know? Just, you ever, never, never mind, you wouldn't understand. Do you, we are new here, so we don't really know folks. Uh, do you have friends or family here? And he kind of sobs a little. Well, it's just the little one now. My wife, she passed. And it's just, uh, just this one and I now. And kind of reaches over, grabs the jar again, the bottle. Uh, 
Why are you here? This is not a destination place. This is... Bromwell's not somewhere people come to. It's a place where people leave one way or the other. We are passing through, uh, but we tried to help out last night with some of the issues with the hair that's been around. What what do you mean you, you tried to help out? Uh, well, we tried to, <laughs> she just put two or two together about where we were last night and, um, uh, you know, just tried to keep it away from the village. So what do you, what do you tell him? You just, you just explain what happened or? Um, no, she's going to be vague because she just realized that they were at the graveyard and he just okay. said that his... Wife what do you tell him? Past. Oh God! I like. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you actually tell? Him? Um. It's important. Uh. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> a, I admit to you, Question. <laughs> <laughs> I think of how I can be. Did your about wife? This. Was your wife a firefighter in in in, in life? <laughs> No? Well, she is in debt. Is that what you said? Uh, I will definitely leave that part out, but just... Okay. Uh, uh, Does your wife have big, meaty thighs? Because I think I collected some. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. So the the second half of that will definitely get left out. Okay, so you don't uh, talk about raising corpses... From, no, no, no. Do you talk about no. the hair setting it a fire? Do you talk about the hair puppets? Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the hair and the fire because I feel like that's going to get discussed amongst the town. And okay, you okay. Figure that out. All right, so like... no corpses, no hair puppets, but fire in the hair. Fire in the hair is now okay. gone. Okay, so you can see he 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 sits up fast and he kind of ooh, knocks over a barrel. You can see. He tips over his 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 bottle of wherever it is. A little bit of brown liquid pours out onto the ground, and he quickly oh god! And he's struggling as he's trying to hold the baby in one hand and pick his bottle up. He's I I I, I just uh, beg your pardon. I've I, I I've I just remembered there is somewhere I have to be. Uh, have a good have a good day. I, I've 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 got to go. And you can see he just sort of shuffles off at that point, like hurriedly, a little dizzily, a little drunkenly. But like he moves off, yeah. Okay. Uh, Little hair of the dog for him. But get it? Because never mind. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. So what are the rest of you doing? Um. Oh, that was a close one. That was almost really bad. Uh, I vote we leave. I think we need to get out of the town. Because we've been talking about lighting the graveyard on fire, mm-hmm. and like they're, like they're as this is spreading, people are like, "Why would you set the graveyard on fire? There's people down there that we love. What's wrong with you?" We they're not there anymore. They can't feel fire, and if some of them can, it's because they're in hell. Or if I think that's how that what works, <laughs> you're an awful human being. Oh goodness, I used to go down and have picnics with me great aunt who raised me since I was a wee little girl. Oh, jeez. So many years ago it was. Every Sunday. Well, they're they're a lot warmer now. uh, There's no more hair disturbing the graveyard. You're welcome. You're you're just in... No, I'm not gonna say (laughs) thank you, you horrible bastard of a man. And Hori is just going to, like, take his sword and just kind of, like, lean his chin on it and just kind of, like, go on. You're threatening? I'm just a random... No, I'm just... You're I'm just... My head's getting tired, I'm you know? I'm going to go speak with the local constable I am. I'm going to tell them all about what you and what you all did. And you can see she just starts to, like, and turns around and going to tell. And she leaves the temple at this point and door closes rickety behind you. Uh, okay, what well, the rest of you doing, bud? This is going Can we well. leave? You can do whatever you want. That's the glory. 
of this little mini hex We can never come house. back to this town, at least for like months. Literally the only town in the area, so you kind of have to. I'm sure <laughs> their memory rests in pieces. I mean, peace. Uh, definitely not pieces. It's just peace when it comes to those families and the graves and things that I saw last night. Anyways, uh, let's figure out something to do. Things that you saw last night, you were on the ground half the time. Yeah, it's a unique perspective. Understand? I'll say. And the perspective of these folks saying that we're terrible people, I should let the town burn down. So what I get for putting it out. If if they're so upset, we might as well boogie, head our way down to the grotto and see what we can get done. I don't think they have any answers when it comes to why I have a small animal growing through my stomach and then spreading throughout my throat. So because you ate like three horses worth of meat, I'm telling no, you that meat. There's something wrong with that meat. People need to eat. I like to do it a lot. So let's get the hell out of here. Head somewhere more productive. I don't think them yelling at us about setting their families on fire is going to help us out in this current situation. <laughs> let's move on. To the Fine. Uh, so how do you guys surmise you're going to go about finding the Grotto's? You don't know where they're at. <clears throat> Dorado is just a bunch of clustered trees, right? Uh, no, it's a little different than that. It's like a cave. Which way did we see such, what's yeah. his face zoom? Uh, Noggin. The same way you went, just much faster than you, and eventually was kind of out of sight, like across the bridge. Yeah, and real small until we couldn't see him anymore. Yeah. Wait, so he shrunk down? It's yeah. a different. He and traveled just... forward. <laughs> And distance. No, creative. I'm playing Hori, and I know that oh, okay, Hori okay. doesn't know that. Okay. I know that. Okay, got it. <laughs> explain to you the concept of distance. There's this thing called perspective. Okay, <laughs> let's explain this concept. Oh, Mr. Perspective on the floor. All right, whatever. Take me with you, Mr. Perspective. Where are we going? Um, we know where the we, hill is. We need to ask someone which direction at least where to go, and then we need to boogie. That's what we got there. Oh, God. So someone's going to um, go and try to get in directions in the town that now has... Uh, okay. That's actively who, hunting who, us who down. Who wants to go try to find where no. stuff is? Who's who's doing it? Who's going to roll... <laughs> who's going to roll a, a wit check? Or, or a will check? I should... The will. Well, we, we travel in the same direction, right? So mm -hmm. should we just keep going the same cardinal direction that we were heading before at that way of town to, to keep continuing the grotto and hopefully come across something that might help us get to that particular area we're headed toward. These are my suggestions. Discuss. Yes, you're right. I will ask people around town okay, where on. the grotto is. Roll Could over. I perhaps uh, get another affliction oh, to refresh my grip? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's rolling. I just remembered that I have Home in the Wild, so I have upper hand when using a will check to navigate in the wilderness. So if I know what a grotto is, is Hori, and I could help us find it. Sure can. You are brittle-minded, Ashley. Oh, no. Special now she's a cannibal and brittle. This makes perfect sense. It's uh, characters who are brittle-minded have been rocked and half-broken by the horrors they are exposed to. Yeah, and, constantly eating bodies. Yeah, and bringing all these bodies out to fight hair puppets and set a cemetery on fire. Okay. Uh, grip checks against the odds. Just some ganks. But you can drag that over out of the chat and put it on your couch. Oh, that's I terrible. Did. Yeah, You have to do lay on hands to keep us alive, and now you're doing it against the odds. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, is your lay on hands a grip check? Uh, no, I think you check. just burn a grip. Don't I you? just burn a grip. Yeah, you just burn a grip. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, I was about to say, I'm terrified. Your uh, healer is going bonkers crazy. Leon, so I have an idea. Okay, Leon wanted to go Leon. talk to people. Let, Long hasn't done anything in a long time. So I'm going to okay, say, go Leon, go ahead and roll a wit test as you go try to cleverly uh, talk around town about. Okay, that's a success. So you learn a few things. You find somebody who hasn't yet heard about the atrocities that have befallen the, 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 the village graveyard and that your specific association with it. Um, but you hear a few things. You hear, like you mentioned, a couple different places that you've heard. Like I heard about these grottos and, you know, poachers and like then I uh, something about like a Ramshead Hill or whatever. So you've learned that uh, there's 
there's a place to the east called Ram's Head Hill. It's like this, uh, it's a it's a rocky hill with some kind of grass and moss. And on top of it, there's like some old kind of ancient megaliths, these stones, like a Stonehenge type place. Um, and that a bunch of like sheep and goats have been for some reason like congregating there. And it's been driving some of the sheep herders crazy because they continue to have to like, no, 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 don't. No, don't go there. And they're trying to herd them back into their various packs. Um, the grottos you hear uh, is a place you no one really likes to go there. They say it's haunted, uh, and like there's these series of caves uh, not too far. It's like a it's the northwest a bit. Um, you have to go through a, a small forest, and on the other side of that forest, uh, in the shadows of the the valley wall, uh, there is a series of uh, there's a series of of caves that you might be able to find something in. Um, you also hear a rumor about a um, kind of a hunter of some kind, uh, a man who hasn't been seen in a while. People are kind of asking around, like, oh, why, why are you off venturing forth? If you if you see uh, an old friend of mine, uh, Ludwig, Ludwig uh, just, just give him a, just check on him, will you? He's, uh, he was just, uh, haven't seen him a good a week or two, and he was always a bit of a, Hmm, kind of a quirky one. He t- tends to bite off things, you know. He might uh, run into some problems with some poachers or such, and he's got some big ideas about that flying creature overhead, too, and I don't... I want to make sure he's okay. And they don't know where he's at, but they just say, if you happen to run into him. So, yeah, you now know generally where Ramshead Hill is, where the haunted grottos are, uh, and just the fact that there's a hunter out there who's missing. Sounds good. Um, and with that, I think we're going to go ahead and call it for tonight. You have a couple different, uh, you have a couple different leads for next time that you can go explore. So many choices. Yes, yes, uh, and you can all kind of talk amongst yourselves about uh, what uh, what choices you want to to, to, to sort of fall on. Uh, all right, so um, Justin, uh, we not you have something to plug to t- t- tell us about your channel before we uh, leave. Uh, for the night and while you do that i'm gonna find us someone to raid so what do you do uh, on your channel twitch.tv slash yahoofa i mostly do world of warcraft um we're in castle to nathry or mythic progression i think we are two of ten where well, i'm not a top streamer like mythic guild leader, like runners i'm we're like upper middle class so if you like watching that type of stuff watching progression watch me slam my head against the wall on a weekly basis and also lose to a boss by 0.07 percent uh come by and watch um and then i do mythic pluses pvp all different type of stuff and then me and ashley do random stuff all the time too so. okay yeah. cool uh and then the rest of us we play these games here and on other places uh so if you haven't already done so hit the you know subscribe stuff or follow or whatever uh and uh, our next show is uh monday where you'll find melissa and i at nine central playing alien from free league uh, and follow on Twitter at Lollygagger CO to figure out when we're going to be playing part two of this. Uh, this is again probably going to be a two or three parter. I think this uh, this little adventure we're on. Uh, and that's about it. So uh, thanks for those of you who hung out. Thank you for Derek for throwing out some of those gift subs in the beginning. Uh, very kind of you. Uh, everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Hopefully you don't get older and more decrepit like me over the weekend. And. Uh, We'll catch you uh, next time. I'm going to put us on the end screen, and then we're going to go ahead and ra- uh, raid uh, Dragons in the Dining Room if you want to hang out and watch some D&D stuff. So good night, everybody.